piece to the saints those of you who are more seasoned and who've already been blessed with some ism you observed a part of the dr phil process and not only did you learn how to peel back the layers you also observe the kind of manner in which you have to do this the calmness the humor the way you have to finesse there are so many gems that you would have observed from my conduct but also there's a lot that we must uncover from the nature of that female that individual woman so we will learn about her i will interpret her i will also explain how she represents much of what we see in modern women in the west mostly the ones we find in cities but more women in the west are being conditioned to be just like her when i tell you there is much to learn you will be astounded as we go through with a fine tooth comb and pick apart this facade this this fake exterior that she puts forward to the world ladies and saints there will be much to learn and as i generally remind you all we will of course abide by our tradition which is show love to those who show love to you uh, and with that said i'll start by acknowledging those who have already supported the work may i acknowledge via cash app shout out to johnny supporting much appreciation and may i acknowledge the second person who supported a uh, shout out to anthony writes peace of the saints i do want to remind every time i speak to you i'm taking a break from a beautiful life you dig um i'll go for as long as people support the work if they don't i'll probably just uh, go ahead and stop it and then uh do a pre-record for the members uninterrupted so uh if i stop for a break and we don't see that people are supporting i'm gonna just uh, cut it and do it for the members of course the members at thesasn.com are the reason that i speak at all uh they're the ones subsidizing your education so definitely uh i thank them and i hope you all uh, thank them as well. Uh, do remember that uh, you'll see me uh, on one other guy's uh, podcast coming up. I don't know if he wants it announced, so I won't announce it before him. Um, for those of you who want to book a consultation or want me to come on your podcast, I had to update cozycal.com slash S-A-S-N. You can book there. You guys and I usually don't like going on podcasts, so this is subject to approval, right? Like you have to be a, a reasonably decent person, a moral person uh, for me to accept the invite. Anyways, let's go ahead and get to this work. Here we go. And just because it's not, you know, fifteen dollars or or more, doesn't mean that uh, it's not appreciated. We we respect every token. Every man should stand up and be counted. Um, we know nothing is free. Ah, uh, so let's start from the very beginning. Uh, so first off, uh, she give you a little bit of background. As you all may be aware, uh, we encountered one another on the Whatever podcast. We had never met before. I didn't know anything about her, didn't know her ethnicity, did not know where she's from, what she does for a living. Our first interaction was, you know, I introduced myself to everyone, which is typical of how I conduct myself in any environment. And when I say introduce myself to everyone, that means the workers, the bosses, uh, the cleaning staff. If I see you and you're a human being, I'm going to show you respect and introduce myself. That's how I conduct myself. Always has been. I was raised by a Southerner. Anyway, so uh, I introduced myself when we we're downstairs uh, at the podcast. We come inside. Nick was giving directions. She was the snot-nosed person showing him no respect or regard. Why? Because he's not a famous YouTuber and he's not a multimillionaire. That's why she didn't show him any respect because he wasn't a main character, right? So she treated him like a peon. This is very common that you observe this among uh, women today, especially those who try to seek the limelight or who try to seek great wealth. One thing I want you guys to understand, it's one of the biggest lessons you're going to get in this podcast women often lie especially the ones in the uh, sex work industry they lie about their income it's very important to understand why they lie and also the implications of the lie why do they lie they lie to aggrandize themselves make themselves feel big and bad particularly when measured up against you the everyday man the average man such that they can look down on you so here's the funny thing they lie about their income so even the guys that do make more money than them, they lie and try to pretend as though they make more money than that guy. It's their trump card. They don't have size. They don't have the ability to enact violence. They don't have logic. They don't have IQ. They, they say, hey, we have money over you, which in some cases is not true. A lot of these sex workers, they're living, I would say, paycheck to paycheck, but they're living tip to tip, if you will, and hopping ick to ick, if you know what I mean. Now, understand this. So 
They lie and say they have more money so that they can look down on you. Women will claim in today's society that, oh, you know, it, men are intimidated by me because I make more money. No, love. No man is intimidated by you because you make more money. They're disgusted with you because of the way you behave when you have money, because of your tyrannical nature, because of the fact that you can't handle money and still behave as a normal person and be respectful to all. Huh? Yes, you become a tyrant. You become unpleasant, domineering, big mouthed, unruly when you have money. That is what men don't like. They're not intimidated because you got a couple bucks. By all means, pay some of this mortgage. By all means, take me out to dinner. By all means, contribute to this vacation you want to go to. Men are not intimidated by women. It's nonsense. It's something that they make up to excuse their bad behavior. And they do this on a consistent basis. And here's the funny thing. I've yet to date a woman who had more money than I do. I've yet to date that woman. But still, I observe these bad behaviors. huh? And I tell you what, I'd love to date a woman who has more money than I do. Absolutely. I always encourage people not to deal with these broke broads. Now, I might not date a chick who has more money than I do, just by chance, right? But if she did, I'd be pleased. And I certainly don't date broke women. I, I date women who are well off. I date women who have more money than the average man. huh? Yes, indeed. And we're going to go ahead and get to this work. Uh, shout out to uh, David. He just went and copped. Oh, that's a fresh hat. I didn't even I didn't even know I produced that one. It's the white MDB label with the red. Wow, that's cold. I might have to cop one of those. That's two player. I didn't even know I sold that. That's cold. Shout out to Justin supporting the work came in by Cash App. Shout out to uh, Karen. Uh, she writes new to your channel and love it. Appreciate it. Thank you, Karen. And shout out to the Lady Saints. Uh, we're going to be doing a show with the Lady Saints. That is the members uh, at T-H-E-S-A-S-N.com. Great upstanding women. And they have a cookbook. You can check that out at thesassin.com and support them. This coming Friday, you'll see them. And we'll have some good conversations. People always say, oh, bring on some intelligent women. Bring on women with morals. Bring on upstanding women. It's a minority of people who say that. And it's an even smaller minority of people who mean that. You'd rather see the uh, ghetto ratchet 304 OnlyFans girl. Let's be honest. You want drama. But the truth is, most of what I do is not for the drama. It's for the upstanding men and women who actually want to learn something. Shout out to Tyree. He writes, peace to the saints. My favorite YouTuber, not even a YouTuber in a real way. Now, acknowledge Melvin came in twice. He writes, Peace of the Saints, when Adam was trying to exit, I thought he was joking. <laughs> no, he had to exit. I'll tell you why. He writes, no substance to no substance and doesn't respect the creator. Indeed, you know, Adam was very wise. And one of the major reasons that he did that exit is because understand this during the podcast. Well, let, let's give you the full picture. When I encountered Adam standing toe to toe, 10 toes down, he saw that. I feared no man like Conan, so he ain't want to fade. So he knew if this becomes physical, the big homie ain't backing down, and nine out of nine, the big homie's going to win. So that's number one. Physical violence did not favor him. So then we go and we start doing the content. Then he tries to match intellectual wits, and he finds himself to be intellectually inferior. He's miscalculated, never encountered an intelligent black man who can articulate as well as I can. Hell, there aren't any white men who can articulate as well as I can. So then he realized, hmm, if I stay here with this man who's exceedingly ruthless, and he knew that because he saw me chop up Anissa real viciously. He's like, dang, if he did that to the female, surely he will show no mercy with me, which is a fact. So when he saw me slicing and dicing, hitting her with the Ginsu, going in like a samurai, he was like, ah, he's going to turn that sword on me very shortly. Let me stage a scene so I can get out of here. Because if he turns that sword on me, he's going to be slicing and dicing for the next four hours of this extra long podcast. And what's worse than that, if he slices and dices and I get out of emotional control, we have to leave the podcast at the same time, which means we're going to walk out into the public, onto the streets at the same time, and he might molly whop me, which would then be even worse. He didn't want to have a TMZ moment like that. So he rationally calculated that I have to make an exit. So that was his escape plan. Very wise and clever on his part. He took a big L in the face of many millions, but he at least minimized it. It could have been worse. What is worse than getting intellectually dominated and then getting physically dominated? That would have been all bad. Everyone would have found out, wow, those tattoos don't give you superpowers. Just makes you look dirty and criminal. Huh? 
Yes, indeed. Shout out to Mr. Browder. He writes, Miles Jaden on YouTube supporting the work. I appreciate it. Shout out to the real ones that stand up. Austin writes, so many gems in the interaction to pick up on. Indeed, I'm going to break it down because the squares and the incels, they didn't even fully comprehend it. I saw in the comments, one guy writes, if he ha if he sleeps with her, he loses. Uh, first off, I try not to sling too much meat out here. You dig? This is that exclusive cock. This is rich man D. You dig? You got to earn this. But Never on the planet Earth does a man take an L for laying down with a gorgeous woman. That would be ultra weird, bro. These incels is just like flipping morality upside down. It's crazy out here. So anyways, I'm going to break it down because I see some people didn't get it. Reminds me of that dumb bimbo on the whatever podcast when I said, hey, do you know the difference between a man driving here and a man flying here commercially? And she said, yes, yeah, she understood, but she didn't understand. It's kind of like that. By the way, shout out to the Ballers, Teddy Fresh comes in with a baller alert. In fact, it was a double baller alert. He writes, keep the stream going, sir. Yes, sir. May I also acknowledge Mr. Tabit? He writes, peace of the saints, tuition for the relevant and informative lecture. And he already knows it's going to be deeply informative. We are about to go deep into this game. Matter of fact, I'll let you know right now. By the end of this, you all will have a master's in psychology <laughs> and the psychology matter of fact, a master's in philosophy, a PhD in philosophy, because we are about to chop it up. Ah, I'm excited for this one. Shout out to Hef supporting the work. He's a real one. May I acknowledge the ballers again. Shout out to the ballers and the bosses showing up. Mr. Chamless writes boiler alert. Thank you for Sunday service. And thank you for this new episode of the hard black over Quetty. <laughs> pause. Uh, number one, did all the girls hit you up after? No, all of them did not. Number two, thoughts on the strife going on in Darfur and South Sudan. You know what? This has been ongoing for a very long time. In fact, when I was in university, it was still going on. And sadly, I don't think we're going to see an, uh, an end to it in the near term. Um, and, you know, I got to do this war report session. There's so many wars going on. People don't know about that are actually quite fascinating. They all have economic driving forces, though. Hef writes, the outfit coordination is hard. I appreciate that. And, you know, it's funny, Hef, when I was getting dressed, my assistant was with me and she was actually with me when I purchased his jacket. I, I think it was the second time I've ever worn it. And I was looking at my hats and I was like, what hat should I wear? And this one was under some other hats. She was like, oh, wear your khaki MDB label hat. And I was like, ah, it actually fits perfectly with it, especially with the canary dime. You dig. But. I want to just, you know, fashion tip for you all who want to look good. One, this is linked in the description, mdblabel.com, log in, boss up. But khaki is a nice basic color. It goes with many colorways. It's easy to blend in with things. So if you want to have staples in your wardrobe, having black, obviously, easy to work with. Having a navy blue is easy to work with. And having khaki is easy to work with. If you stick to those three basic colors, you'll look reasonably presentable. So those are the colors I like to have hats in. I like to have certain pieces because it's easy to match them up. Thank you very much. Shout out to Paul T. Writes, Peace of the Saints. Thank you for taking the time to disseminate yesterday's meaningful Sunday service. I appreciate that. You know, Sunday service might not be the most well attended. Uh, definitely is not a financially solvent activity. I, I don't think anything I do on YouTube is. But I do it because those of you who really seek self-improvement are going to really feast on the knowledge there. And more importantly, it adds a, a spiritual aspect. And today, many of us lack spirituality. So let's go ahead and get to this work. Freshly Snipes tuning in. You dig? Shout out to Carter Rice Tuition. Shout out to the members in a real way. Shout out to the members, the ones a part of the FizAm. May I also acknowledge uh, via uh, Rob just copped a beanie at manandwomanbrand.com. I actually, I think I'm going to cop that one myself. I got the black one from MDB Label, but I don't have that one. And I do need more beanies because I jog with beanies in the winter. You dig? That's just me though. Here we go. Now we're going to break this down bit by bit because I'm thorough. I'm surgical. Oh, oh, yes. Uh, as I was saying, so I met her on whatever podcast. I observed that she disrespected Nick. So when the podcast got on, I said, yep, yeah, seek and destroy. You're the one. So I went ahead and obliterated her because I'm not a talker. Some people talk about men's rights. But if you want to respect men and the government and you want to change legislation, shouldn't it also be that you respect men in real life and you will protect the rights of good men in real life. So I believe in that. And I also believe in people respecting the working man. The working man is underrated. When I say the working man, I'll tell you precisely what I mean. The working man, construction workers, firemen, police officers, the people, who, janitors, everyone who does real jobs, who go to work day in, day out, they show up on time and they work until they've clocked out. Huh? 
They don't get extra days off. They don't get to do it when they feel like it. They don't get to work remotely. These are the men who make the world spin. These are the foundational aspects of the economy. I appreciate every one of them, and she should too. Huh? Yeah. If she ever had a problem with her toilet and called a plumber and he ain't show up, it'd be a problem, wouldn't it? If she called her plumber and he wanted to work remotely, it'd be a problem, wouldn't it? You know, it turns out plumbers, electricians, these men are important. So, yes, I stand up for them. Anyway, so she was disrespectful to a working man, so I was disrespectful to her. And also factual, I might add. Then after that, we get off the podcast. I go back to the Ritz-Carlton. And then eventually, uh, next morning, morning, I fly back to uh, St. City, Las Vegas, where I am the mayor. And then I get a DM from her on Instagram. Hey, you live in Las Vegas? Yes, I do. Um, oh, we should do something. In fact, I can read it directly. I don't want to make up anything. So let me read it directly. Um, and this is not, I'm not putting out any private facts that she would want concealed. I'm just you know, explaining how this came to be. So I, I don't believe in making private conversations public. That is immature and that is silly. That's something that a groupie would do. That's something that a hashtag me too broad would do. That is not something that I approve of or would ever do. Or I don't consider her to be my enemy, so there's no reason for us to behave uh, toward one another as enemies would. Although you guys saw that she was clearly holding a grudge, and we're going to get into that too. You know, it's quite wild when someone loves you and hates you at the same time. You dig? Anyway, so she had hit me on DM on IG, and she writes, quote, um, you live in Vegas, right? Question mark. I reply, uh, Excuse me, I didn't reply to that. She writes, I think it would be really cool if we had a sit down to follow up with everything if you're up for it. Now, mind you, when she says we should have a sit down, that doesn't mean that we should have a podcast. That doesn't mean that we should, you know, do some business together. A sit down is like a, a conversation, a meeting, something like that. Clearly, you know, something one on one is what she's suggesting. So, in as much as that's the case, um, we met up. And that was the day, actually, it was at night. That was the night before the podcast. I, Forget precisely what time it was. I'm sure I could probably figure out uh, based on this. She actually called me on the telephone. But it was quite late at night. So she, you know, I was at my suite on the strip. She pulled up um, and blah, blah, blah. And then the next day we did a podcast. So anyways, um, this is something that she wanted to do. It wasn't like I, you know, I saw people said I finessed her or I got her on the podcast. No, I didn't get her on the podcast. She, she suggested it. And there are reasons for that. Um, one thing I want you guys to know is that you know, there are two ways you're always going to win. And I'll give you guys a clue for those who consider themselves red pill, which means misinformed. For those who are in the manosphere, which means, again, misinformed. They fool you into thinking that money is the end all be all. Money has become their God. These folks are just like Adolf 22. They're just like Mo Lestiny, the blue haired booty bandit. They think because they have money, they're going to get women and retain women. It's not the case. You might get a woman. You're only renting her. You don't own her. She's not your property, little buddy. It's really the game, the ism that locks it down. And it's also who you are, the greatness that you have as an individual man, which is why I teach you all to be great, not to be great speakers and great communicators, but to really deliver the goods. That is the most important thing. When you can speak well, it just puts the icing on the cake. You hear me? It just makes it a little easier for you to go viral because you didn't uh, rolled out the game so beautifully. But understand this. Number one, when I showed up, I already had the advantage. In fact, I'm not even going to share all this. I'm going to leave this in my master communicator course, which drops January 10th. You can get that at Marquette Devon. So I'm not going to drop too much of that game on you all. Uh, I'm not going to give you guys too much of that master communicator piece. That's going to be in the course January 10th. You can get it at Marquette Devon. If you're too dumb to get it now, uh, you can buy it later when you realize and the price has gone up. You might be smart enough to ask your mom to get it for you for Christmas. It will change your life. But long story short, there was a number of things that during that first podcast on whatever that indicated why she would have attraction for me. Number one, the manner of dress. Number two, the fact that I was being myself and cared nothing for anyone else. I, I didn't try to, you know, blend in. I didn't try to, uh, you know, uh, go with the flow. No, I'm creating the flow. I'm not going with the flow. I'm creating the flow here. I'm not trying to be like anyone else. Did you guys observe that the guy on the whatever podcast, the host, Brian, he always wears a plaid shirt, which isn't necessarily his style. Like this is like standard white boy fare that you might find kids who grew up in Mammoth or Tahoe or certain parts of California. They, they dress like this. There's nothing wrong with that. That's their culture. Then you have Adolf 22, who's not even from California. He's from way in the Northeast, right? But he's come and tried to act like he's a Cali kid. It's funny. He also 
from time to time tries to act like he's a black kid. It's funny. But anyways, point is, he showed up dressed like a clone of Brian. Anyone notice that? Or was that just me that he wanted to show up in the plaid? I thought it was quite fascinating. You know, blending in. This is what the weaklings do. This is what beta males do. They go with the flow. They don't ever create the flow. So number one, the style of dress. Boom. I'm not trying to blend in or anything. Um, also, I already know that it's upon me to establish a presence here because I'm in the minority position. There's three conservatives and seven uh, hyper liberal individuals. So one, it was a major show of strength because the first thing she saw of Marquette Devon Burton was Marquette Devon Burton being a lion. That's the first thing she saw. I hop out of a black Uber. Yeah, I hop out of a black Uber. I walk straight up to someone who's bigger than me and say, do you want the fade? He was like, no. I was like, are you sure you don't want that fade? You could tell I wanted the fade. Like, you could tell, no, this guy's not pretending. This guy's ready to throw hands right now while wearing a suit. The velvet pimpin' is ready to catch this body with his bare hands while wearing a suit in dress shoes. He's with the shits. So don't ever let anyone lie to you and think that women don't like guys who are savages. Oh, they love it. Oh, they love it. In fact, there was a segment during the Whatever podcast wherein they said, have you guys ever dated anyone who's been a criminal or been to jail? Oh, shocker. All the harlots had. Of course they had. Why? Because at the end of the day, women want a strong man. At the end of the day, women want a man who can protect them. Huh? Yes. So they want a man who lives by his own law, a man who is not fearful. And that should go in direct contradiction to what you hear in the manosphere in the red pill space where they say, oh, you know, you got to have money. You got to have your stuff together. These women talked about going visiting a guy in prison and jerking him off under the table on a consistent basis every week for several months. He clearly doesn't have any access to money. He doesn't even have his own freedom. Yet she was there doing her duty, huh? And the Mexican shorties, they stick with you for years on end, homie. And I know it. I've seen it with my own eyes because that's what I grew up among, blacks and Mexicans, nothing else. And you might say, Marquette, do you mean Mexicans or Latinos? No, I mean specifically Mexicans. There were no other types of Latinos where I grew up in my neighborhood. Now, that being the case, when she first saw me, I walked up on Brody, said, do you want this smoke? And he said, no, I'm a hoe. I said, cool. Well, then listen here, ho. Let's go up and do this content. So first, her first like sighting of me was like, wow, Brody's a savage. <laughs> he walked up, didn't say hi to anybody, didn't slap, fat, slap hands with anybody, no high fives, asked for a fade, and then went upstairs to conduct business. He's with it. Oh, yeah. And I did that while looking good in a suit. So then we get on there. We're having a conversation. Then again, so I went from the physical domination to intellectual domination. Every chick wants to be dominated by you. Marquette, what do you mean? Well, how could you be the leader if you're not stronger? How could you be the leader if you're not out in front? How could you be the leader if you're not the braver party? How could you be the leader? Huh? Yeah, leadership, strength. Who's the most respected king? The warrior king. So display that. Then during the conversation, even despite the insults, for those of you who are good listeners, and mind you, I often remind you to be a great listener is one of the most important skills in life, especially as a man, especially as a leader. It is critical to your success. I would much rather be a good listener than a great speaker. Huh? For those of you who are great listeners, you would have heard her during that podcast. She says, well, Marquette, how can you say X, Y, and Z? Because you're a fairly good looking guy. Now, mind you, that's her giving a compliment to someone who had been roasting her. So, you know, it's real. huh? Because, you know, once they get in their emotions and they're holding grudges, they're just certain things they ain't about to say unless it's the truth. And she probably understated how she felt about it because she was big mad. Now, understand this. A part of her attraction is not only the physicality, but it's also the spirit. Uh, that's why you have Sunday service. Get you spiritual. You dig? There, there's something greater to, than the flesh and the blood. Uh, there's tone of voice. There's the way you project yourself. It, there's that thing that people can feel from you. Some might call it swag. There's so many different things that might attract a woman other than your physical appearance. And that's why these nerd dating coaches and pickup artists, they teach you such a small minor percentage of what you can utilize to attract a woman. Huh? Yeah, come on now. So anyways, we already knew she was physically attracted. So it was a wrap, man. It was in the bag. And here's the funnier thing. I have to play nice to get her to that level, you dig? And remember, also, you guys don't know this, but fear, fear is a strong emotion. What are women? They are creatures that deal deeply in emotions. 
Do you know that when you look at arousal, fear is a form of arousal? Uh? Anger is a form of arousal. I put her through a number of emotions that had her confused and mixed up, and certainly she was aroused. Yeah, they all love a savage, uh? and they all love to be dominated, especially one like her. Those unruly ones, those are the ones that like to be dominated, choked, spanked, thugged out, degraded in the bedroom. Come on now. And why do they like that? Because it sets them in the proper place they need to be in society or in a family, which is below a man. They truthfully seek that. Their conscious mind, which has been poisoned by the mainstream, poisoned by feminism, will not allow that. But the subconscious mind desires to be dominated. And that's why behind closed doors in that bedroom, sexually, they'll let you dominate them. Huh? In fact, they desire it. But here's the thing, a real boss, yeah, I'm dominating all categories. I'm dominating all fourth quarters, all nine innings. You did? Ain't, ain't no days off out here. Yeah, we going to get into it. So now you understand the lead up and also where the desire was coming from. And then the fact that she followed up after the show, invited herself on the podcast, no doubt for clout. But also there was obviously some other things that she wanted because before the podcast, the night before, she wanted to kick it. You hear me? So that would teach you something now, wouldn't it? Now, me, I'm going to keep it G. You heard me? Loose lips sink ships. I'm going to keep it player and real gentleman-like. Huh? Yeah, we going in today, Saints. And feel free to send in your comments, questions, tuition as we carry on. By the way, shout out to the ballers. Hussein writes, Salaamu uh, Alaikum. Much respect. Keep applying the pressure. Ah, uh, Sir, yes, sir. Wa Alaikum Assalamu Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. Yes, I will. Ahi. Il Rude, supporting the work. I appreciate you. Shout out to uh, Killian, supporting as well. I appreciate that. Now, I acknowledge another baller, Prince of All Sayings. And shout out to Prince of All Sayings because he supports consistently. I've seen him, you know, uh, send super chats in the comments on videos that he saw that were not live. So I appreciate that. You know, that, that's a real one. He writes, keep this going as long as is necessary, Saint. The game must be preached and heard. Listen, there is so much game contained in this interview. It's extraordinary, honestly. Uh, Sean writes, peace of the saints tuition. And for those of you who are very mindful, you're going to be, you're about to be mind blown. There, there's so many details that I need you all to peep. So many. Uh, shout out to Corey. Oh, he, he, I guess it's drip time. Corey went into mdblabel.com. He caught, he caught this one, which is fire. I love it. It's one of my favorites. It's a staple. It's a staple piece. And then he got the white one with the red flag. And that one I got to get, I got to remind my assistant to get that. And also the running belt, um, that, uh, one of the saints produces, I think I asked my assistant to buy it. I don't know if she bought that for me. So I got to remember that one. Shout out to JB air supporting the work via cash app. Shout out to Walton. Oh, Walton used to be the drip King. He just went and copped it. He still might be the drip King. He went and copped this one. He also got a new bomber jacket that I just ordered. I don't even have it. It's all white. It's on mdblabel.com and it has the sleeve, you know, a, a gray rose. It's pretty player. You dig. And I also acknowledge Ross. He writes worst woman ever. You know what, Ross? I have to agree with you. In fact, we can officially categorize her as not a good person. She is in actual fact not a good person. And that does mean something. I will explain what that means and how that should impact the way you would engage with such a person. He writes, content gold, have her every time. Yes, indeed. She is good for content. Sadly, uh, and mind you, anything that I say about her during this conversation is not to degrade her. It's not to put her down. It's not to be negative. It is merely for educational purposes. And any adjective that I would assign to her that might even sound like a pejorative is merely to describe and to be accurate. Accurate. So do forgive me if if the road the road gets rough at some point. Uh, shout to Alfonso supporting the work by Cash App writes peace to the saints. Indeed, I acknowledge via Cash App. EJ writes tuition peace to the saints. Man, also shout to Corey um, two times. All righty. Uh, Austin, he writes, she said she lost her virginity at 25. And you said, you know what that's about, bruh. You got to let us youngins know what that's about. Absolutely, I will. You see, we tend to assign morality to women who maintain their chastity and hold off on intercourse. Yet there comes a point where there are diminishing returns on holding off on intercourse. And it comes a point where the woman holding off on intercourse is less a function of morality and chastity and instead a reaction to trauma. 
what kind of trauma you might ask. The trauma of abuse in childhood, specifically of the sexual variety. This is not the first woman you have seen on a podcast with me who has suffered sexual trauma in childhood. I've had many conversations with women and they've revealed this to me. Even girls have revealed these things to me as I used to be a public school teacher. During one of the podcasts, I'm not going to say which one. It was a Saint City podcast. It was a, a young woman who said that she was a virgin. Now, this girl, when she said she was a virgin, I, in fact, knew she was not a virgin. It's almost like I can inhale her and tell that that's not the case. I instinctively knew it wasn't the case, and I knew what she meant and why she stated it that way. When the female experiences sexual trauma at the hands of a male in childhood, it often causes dysfunction, sometimes sexual dysfunction. Sometimes it manifests itself as LGBTQ behavior. In this first girl's case, not Anissa, she had been living and behaving as a lesbian. But I knew that was not what was in her heart and soul. She had just not met an upright man, a righteous man, a good man, an honorable man, an honest man, a man who would be a proper protector. And mistrusting men and growing to hate males, she had avoided them. This particular young lady, beautiful woman, really. I remember when I first saw her, I was very attracted to her. Gorgeous face, lovely complexion, nice rack on her, good, good and slim, young lady. I remember I was very much so attracted to her. And as soon as I saw her, I walked straight up to her and I told her, I was like, look, you mine. <laughs> you mine. You hear me? Told her straight up. She started laughing, thought I was playing. Anyways, I took what would have been her virginity, except that it wasn't her virginity because her virginity was taken by a sick, perverted male, in fact, a family member who had been molesting her for quite some time. And this is a sad thing. And truth be told, if it were up to me, I'd round up all of these persons and have them hanging from a noose, that is. Not hanging with Mr. Cooper, hanging from a noose. These people are ill. Um, but anyways, the reason she was able to give that to me is because I was the first honorable, upright, real man she had ever met and had the pleasure of dealing with. So when she said she was a virgin, physically speaking, from a hymen standpoint, she was not a virgin. But that was the first time with me that she ever gave of herself willingly to a man. The same thing is true of Anissa. There is no doubt in my mind that she suffered sexual abuse in her childhood. And sometimes it actually comes from the father. Sometimes it comes from a brother, cousin, uncle. In her case, I do not believe that it came from her father. I'll tell you why later. I'm quite confident it wasn't her father. Could have been a brother, could have been a cousin, but or even an uncle, but undoubtedly it came from some male that was close to her, probably in her family. Perhaps one of the reasons she moved way out of her town, huh? far away from her family, and started a whole new life in Sin City, eventually in sex work. Undoubtedly, she's had a lot of sexual dealings because no one, mark my words, you all understand logic, no one goes from being completely dead sexually up to age 25, no sexual experience whatsoever. And then all of a sudden you're on OnlyFans. This is not, this is not possible. Too big of a jump. And not only are you on OnlyFans, you'd go on the whatever podcast and express this to many millions of persons. So we know that there is a lot that was unsaid there. And because I for sure know why she was a 25 year old virgin out of respect during that podcast, giving her a chance to show herself to be a good woman, giving her a chance to redeem herself. I said, I will not expose this. This is a sensitive thing. So I let it slide. And when I said, I know why you say that and what you mean, you notice out of all the times on the show, she's very combative. She did not get combative then because she knew I knew. Huh? She knew I knew. Every now and then you can tell when there's someone who can see clear through you see clear through you. And she knew I knew. So she just let that go because it was very cryptic when I said it. So we all know she knew that I knew. And in fact, I did know. Yeah. Shout to Sean Muhammad supporting the work. May I acknowledge the out of pocket variety show supporting shout out to the ballers. Terrence writes, shout out to all the ballers in a real way. Peace to the saints. Be good to good people. Indeed. Applying this principle has helped me create an abundance of new opportunities. It is a true story. Yes, all this karma crap. I don't know if that actually works in real life, but be good to good people. It will always return to you. 
What do I mean? It's called reciprocity. You do something for a good person. They received a gift. They feel the need to give something back. You do something for a bad person. They give you nothing back. Huh? You do something for a greedy person. They take and take and take till you're empty. Learn from that three sentence Bible. Be yourself. Be good to yourself. Be good to good people. Shout to intuition supporting the work as well as self proclaimed. Appreciate you. And the he didn't double baller alerted. He writes, YouTube won't allow me to send $100. So I had to run it again. It get like that. And I appreciate you. Shout to the real ones. Said it was so nice. Had to do it twice. It gets like that. Yes, indeed. I acknowledge Tyree. He just got the oversized tie-dye shirt on mdblabel.com. I actually have that one myself. It's one of my favorites. I'm about to take a trip around the world again. I will be packing that one. I, I like it. It's a nice youthful feel. You heard me? Shout out to Austin. He sent in the question via Patreon. I actually already read it because I trust him, so I didn't even need to see the money. I just read the question straight away. That's what family's about. That's what honorable people are about. That's what being a good person is about. Trust, respect. You heard me? Now let's get back into this ism. And thank you to those of you who are supporting the work. That will keep the stream going. Peace to the saints. Okay, my volume is uh, getting funny. So give me a second. And once the volume does actually uh, come on, please do confirm that you're able to hear it. Uh, I figured that out. And by the way, for those of you who don't do podcasts, you'd just be astounded to know how much work it takes just on the technical side, on the equipment side. The equipment is very expensive. You have to have a ton of it. You have to move it around when you're doing different types of shows. It, look, it might look easy. It's not easy as it turns out. Peace to the saints. It's the big homie, the one and only Fax Kellerman, Stephen A. P.M., your favorite YouTuber's favorite YouTuber, Flex Luther. Mal now, what I want you guys to understand is take a look at baby girl's face as I'm making my intro. What you'll notice every time I've ever made my intro and there's a female there, they pretty much have this disposition, which is one of admiration, respect, entertainment. What do you often hear women say? It's one of the few things that they say consistently that is actually true. They say, I like a man who can make me laugh. And, and, and they mean that. Here's the funny thing. We all want to laugh. That's why you guys tune into the drama sessions, right? We want to laugh. We want to feel emotional variation. So you can see that, oh, she's in love right here. Absolutely. And I don't blame her. You heard me. It's not many cats that got swag like that. There are very few who can talk it like I can talk it and damn near none that, that can walk it like I can walk it. So she's seeing, you know, the one of one, none before, none, become, uh, none to come. And here's the key. When I'm engaging in this right now, it's almost like it, it's like performance in nature. And so right there, I'm doing the performance and she is, in fact, a, a fan. And you can see the admiration in her pretty little face. And I appreciate that. But here's a, another thing that you'll notice. I ain't doing it for her. This is the same intro that I do, whether I'm on my podcast, I'm on a I'm guest starring on a podcast this is my intro. I'm being myself. I'm doing what I do. You dig. And she's just appreciating a master at work. You dig. So that's one thing I want you guys to observe. Malcolm Flex. And there's the eye roll. And I want you guys to also think twice on this. So when chicks give you the eye roll or they say negative things, don't buy it. That's why you have to have real confidence. You see, I live like a real P, man. I'm not out here trying to impress any broad or any man for that question. I want you, I want to give you a quick example. Uh, there was a young lady. Um, I remember I was walking down the Las Vegas Strip with two of the Saints, actually, and I see a gorgeous blonde chick, right? Blonde chick, blue eyes, nice rack, and has some wagon on her, too. She's about five six, and she's walking down the Strip. I'm walking this way. She's walking the opposite way, but she's with a guy, and I'm looking at her, and she's reckless eyeballing the pee. You hear me? And she's with a dude, but she's looking at me so hard. I knew someone right. So as she was looking at me, I give her one of these. You hear me? I give her one of these. And mind you, this one finger, for the record, this one finger, pause, has pulled more women than every dating coach on YouTube. Just this one finger. Any bit of game they claim to teach you, just me doing this, has pulled more chicks than any bit of fake game they've taught you. So I gave her one of these. Boom. She... Damn near ran over to me and grabbed my arm and then turns turns to the other guy and says, this is my boyfriend. And the other guy like makes a face like word and then keeps walking. So what I figured out at that point was 
he had walked up on her as she was strolling and he started kicking some game to her. She wasn't buying the game. The game wasn't crispy, you dig? So when she saw a real P and I gave her one of these because she was reckless eyeballing, she went ahead and jumped ship and jumped onto a you know a beautiful yacht, you dig? Something luxurious, more suitable for her. I want you guys to understand a couple pieces of this. Number one, if it's your broad, you ain't got to worry, you dig? If it's your girl, she going to be looking at the pavement or she going to be looking at a pimp. She ain't going to be licking all around to see what's out there, looking for opportunities. If it's your girl, she should be studying the pavement or studying you. Everything else doesn't exist, you dig? That's number one. Number two, why was I so brazen to give her one of these when she was already with a guy? Because I could tell that he wasn't a real boss. He wasn't a boss dog. He wasn't a dominant man. He was a weak man. You hear me? And I, I'm not in the business of stealing people's girls. I don't do that. That's not my thing. But if she reckless eyeballing like that, come on over here, baby. You see something that you need. You dig? You're peeping, but you ain't speaking. And we could do it every weekend if you got a good attitude. Now, check this out. So she came on over to me, but here's the thing. She still wanted to talk crazy. So here's my lesson that I want you guys to understand. They give you the eye roll. They talk crazy to you. Ah, let that roll off your shoulder. This is the first thing she said to me when we start walking. Uh, and mind you, I have my jewels on per usual, you dig? And, and shout out to the real bosses and ballers that got the real deal of everything, you dig? You, you heard me? My little chain costs more than your big chain. My old school, we talking about whips right now. My old school costs more than your new school. Shout out to the bosses and ballers who really know what it is. But anyways, I'm walking with Shorty. I had on a tennis chain. And she looks at me and she said, uh, no, first thing I said to her, I was, I was like, who's old boy, though? And she says, he's nobody, which was a fact. And then she says, ah, that's a fake chain. I looked at her, looked her up and down and just chuckled, carried on with the game. Did I try to say, no, no, this is a real chain, love. You're looking at a real deal baller out here. Did I say, no, 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 love, this is a real chain. Yeah, my cars are real. The money in my pocket is real. Everything about me is real. A fee I to the gristle. Did I try to convince her? Hell no, nah, I didn't try to convince her. There's no need. Why? Because if she spent enough time with a boss, she's going to be able to assess what's real and what's fake. And here's the other thing. It didn't matter if the chain is real. It didn't matter if the chain is fake. Yeah, the chain could be fake or real, but this game is real, you dig? And the man wearing it is real. So I'm not going to let the chain speak for me. Marquette Devon Burton is going to speak for Marquette Devon Burton. Not material objects, you dig? I could be broken in disrepair and despair. I could still crack me abroad, you dig? Because I'm still the same man, which is a great man. And I need you all to have that level of confidence. You don't have to prove a damn thing to abroad. You don't have to drive a fancy car to get abroad. You don't have to have nice clothes to get abroad. You might be standing back like Marquette. You got fancy clothes cars and nice clothes how would you know because i came from the ghetto and i always had a hoe that's how i know you dig from live true experience man and i didn't pull chicks in all kinds of circumstances i've been in the midst of jogging covered in sweat pulling hoes you dig man matter of fact when i took off my jacket i think three hoes just fell out my jacket pocket they all over me man so here's the thing none of that is relevant i say that to say this when the broad starts rolling her eyes here at one level, they're trying to test your confidence, see if it's really real, see if you really believe that you're the guy. And here's the fact of the matter. Most of you guys don't believe you're the guy because you're just pretending. You're showing them an image, but there's no substance behind it. When you really become that guy, a broad rolls her eye means nothing. A broad has a word uh, to degrade you means nothing. A broad wants to show you a little bit of disrespect or a little bit of pullback means nothing, huh? So I want all of you guys to have a thousand percent confidence, confidence on a million. And I always advise you in business and in romance, go forward like a fearless lunatic. And I mean every bit of what I just said, you dig? I want you to be like the ball from 300, huh? Carrying on. So we breaking this down bit by bit so you can truly understand. Come on now. Let me see where we, where we left off at. Here we go. Shout out to Akua. Oh, by the way, shout out to the ballers. Baller alert. Akua42 writes, Peace of the Saints. I would love for you to do a dating podcast like FNF and the whatever podcast. It would be awesome to watch you dress down these OF girls. It would be awesome. You know, funny thing is I actually uh, did used to do one. Shout out to Jabrizi, good friend of mine, one of the Saints, honorable man. He even donated a camera, a very expensive camera, like $1,000 camera um, to enhance what we have going on here. That's Those are good friends. You want good people around you. He and I, we did a, a dating podcast. There are many episodes floating around, particularly on the backup channel. It's called The Saint. So if you check out the backup channel, you'll see many of those clips. I'll make sure that I post some for you. I think you'll enjoy it. 
And yeah, it, it was great. It just, it's a very heavy lift and those are extremely expensive shows. I don't know how they do theirs, but you know, you know, the whatever podcast, I don't love the way they do bo- uh, business in as much as, you know, they basically expect you to be there for five hours. They don't provide you with, uh, you know, anything to eat. It, it just, it, it's not really, uh, the way I would do things. Now, when you're having a dating podcast with a lot of people, that's an expensive tab. If you're providing alcohol, you're providing, you know, soft drinks, you're providing food and, you know, other things. So it's extraordinarily expensive and time consuming. And in my case, you know, maybe this doesn't happen to everyone who runs dating podcasts, but with Jabri and I, you know, after the podcast, the, the chicks, they all want, they want to kick it. They want to go out on the Las Vegas strip. You hear me? They want to see how a player live, man. So it was just really time consuming. Not to say I wouldn't do it again, but we really have to find a proper business model because it's an extraordinarily expensive show. If you want to do it in an honorable way, I can't have people at my studio for five hours and not feed them. That's just not the way I was brought up. That's not SAS and culture. SAS and culture, Jeremy, we're, we're going to feed you. We believe that you should eat every four hours minimum and a woman should be bringing that food to you or making sure that that's arranged. You dig? Shout out to uh, Meso Marv writes, peace to the saints, peace to the saints indeed. Shout out to Mr. Chambliss writes, War Quet has brought an end to the red pill. There will be no recovery. Convert to the ism. Prepare yourselves accordingly in a real way. Spread the word. Shout out to self proclaim as well as Christian Galvez. And Chris writes, Peace to the saints. Daryl Lynn, shout out to the lady saints. You dig? She writes, Peace to the saints. I really enjoy your geopolitical uh, and history segments. I've learned so much. I hope you continue to talk on these subjects. I will. And in fact, I got a number of videos backlogged. In fact, I have a very fascinating video on Liberia, a country in Western Africa. And it, it's really a historical piece. I think people will very much so enjoy it. Even racists who say things like, go back to Africa. It turns out that there were a significant number of black Americans that did go back to Africa. And I'll tell you what happened in that segment. Magnus self-proclaimed, he writes, how would you confront your girl to get her to tell the truth when you caught her in a lie? Sometimes they'll never tell the truth. (laughs) Literally, they they will not come clean. And sometimes it's because they don't believe they're lying. Yet that happens. And other times it's because they're deceitful liars. They're snakes by nature. And they're going to stick to the lie. They know they're lying. They're just going to stick to the lie. Here's the more important thing that you need to ask yourself, self-proclaimed. Number one is, is this actually something that is critical and core? Meaning if she doesn't have understanding on this particular thing, is this an extinction level issue? Meaning it will cause the extinction of our romantic relationship if she can't understand this. Or is it you trying to assert power by getting her to admit something or to change her mind on something that's largely irrelevant? So ask yourself that. How important is this thing? Because she may never change her mind or come clean. And also, secondly, understand that there's a significant value misalignment to where this thing is so serious to you. And she's serious about it, but you're on opposite ends. Huh? You're on opposite ends. So is this a value misalignment that's so bad that you shouldn't want to be with her? Because remember, the worst thing you can do is to get feigned compliance, meaning the woman agrees with you out of her mouth, but inside of here where it counts and inside of here, she doesn't agree or she's against you. And that will cause her to be resentful. Just imagine you force her to make a, a, an apology or to say that she lied. And then what she does is she starts talking negatively about you to her friends or to her family. This will be damaging to your relationship. So you don't want to force that. Some battles are not worth it. And if it's a core battle, value misalignment, start shopping for a new female. You dig? Shout out to Rob. Supporting the work. Truly appreciate it. Yes, we are getting into it, saints. I acknowledge Orion Stoner. Sorry to say your whole name. I appreciate it. Uh, I apologize. It just, it just sounds so damn good. Shout out to the Stoner family. Good people there. I acknowledge Mr. Thompson supporting the work as well. Shout out to Jaden. And shout out to uh, a code just became a member at T-H-E-S-A-S-N.com. We welcome you to this thing of ours. Kent Drippy Jr. Look at her. She loves Stephen it. Stephen A. Pimp again. Loving it. Just because I wanted to, you know. Just stripped her down. The crown prince of Edom. Eat it down. Gave her some OF Edom, footage. Saint and the center. And today we have here uh, your favorite, I don't even know what to call you. Bimbo, branded bimbo. I'm just. Now that's interesting. So number one, she shows up in like five inch heels. And so for some strange, I guess not a strange reason, she wasn't able to follow directions, which is very common with this type, right? So I gave her the directions to Sasson headquarters. Uh, she arrived on time, which, you know, much respect to her. Uh, I, I do appreciate that. So she arrived on time. 
and went to the wrong place. And so I had to go retrieve her on foot because she couldn't follow fairly basic directions, which is not entirely surprising. You know, people get lost and, you know, directions and navigation are not the strong suit of the human female. So that, that's fine. And when I see her, she's on five inch heels. So she's still like two inches shorter than me. But it's just like, word, you're wearing five inch heels. I, I was kind of like, my first thought was like, throw up. And the first words out of her mouth are this. I look like a hooker. I look like a total hooker. Now, the outfit was not so bad. Granted, you're kind of wearing a lingerie top, but it was the five inch heels that put her over the edge for being a hooker, no doubt. So she self-proclaimed, I look like a hooker. And I've met many women like this. And this is a very dangerous woman, gentlemen. If you ever deal with a woman who knows that she's dressing like a hooker, a slore, a prostitute, a promiscuous woman, she knowingly puts on these clothes to take on the uniform and appearance of a prostitute, knowingly, and does it anyways. Huh? Yes, this is a person with no morals. This is a person with with a lack of male, uh, lack of respect for her father. Huh? For real. That means her father is not in her mind. Her father's wisdom is not in her mind. She rebukes her father and rejects his teachings. Or maybe he didn't have any teachings. I'll give you an example. There's one young lady I know from a foreign country. I, I had to stop responding to her because she's not feminine enough. She doesn't want to satisfy the drive and desire of a man when he wants it. She wants to do things she wants to, and that's not acceptable. You heard me? If you choose to deal with a man, ladies, you are responsible for satisfying him as often as he wants, whenever he wants, especially if you want to stay in a boss's life. So I had to, you know, set her aside. You did because she wasn't up to the task. Point is this. I was with the young lady in a country that was not her own, right? So her and I, we leave her country, right? separate. Did we leave together? I think we left separately. Yeah, we left separate. I left first and then she came to meet me in another country, nearby country, right? So this young lady comes and meets me in a nearby country. It was a Muslim country. Listen to me. This woman left her country, an atheist country, and she met me in a Muslim country, knowing it was a Muslim country. Ask me in advance, what should I wear? What shouldn't I wear? I say, well, understand these people, they have a culture that is more conservative respect their culture. She says, sure thing. Shows up in the country. We go out first day, go to the mall. She's wearing a short skirt. We're walking and she tells me, oh, people keep staring at me in my head. I'm like, for sure. They don't see this every day. Your, your coochie's almost out. Yeah, of course they're staring. You're in a religious country. You're not of their ethnicity. You're an oddity. You're making a, a mockery. You're making a display of yourself and of me. You even make me look bad. I didn't tell her this. It's too late. <laughs> she's a slower. What can you do? So she's walking around with this short skirt and keeps on saying, oh, I don't feel comfortable. Oh, they're judging me. Oh, why are these women? And it's the women. too. So it's not the guys. It's the women. The guys aren't even looking at me. It's the women. They're looking at me with hatred. They're looking at me like they're disgusted. They're judging me. They're discriminating against me. Blah, 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 blah. This is the kind of thing that makes me say, Hey, babe, that's like you going out and getting tattoos all over your body and face. You get a tattoo teardrop and you say, why do people look at me like I'm a criminal? Because you're wearing a criminal's uniform, love. Why do people look at me like I'm a killer? Because you have a tattoo tear, love. And you chose to get that. You chose to show up in this harlot outfit in a conservative country which is to say that you have no respect for people outside of yourself and you knowingly decided to come here and disrespect everybody and make yourself the center of attention thinking you would get positive attention, but you are among people who are largely righteous and they are looking at you like you're trash <laughs> and you're mad about it and you're claiming that they're not open-minded. They're not open-minded because they don't accept your bad behavior. They're not open-minded because in Rome, they expect you to respect Roman culture and Roman law. They say, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. <laughs> yeah, I say that to say this. That woman, she turned out to not be a good woman for me. I knew that a mile away because she doesn't respect anything outside of herself. And she would knowingly wear a whore's uniform. She wear a prostitute's uniform. And then say, I'm not a prostitute. Don't look at me like that. Same thing this broad does. Meets me 
at Sasson headquarters, first words out of her mouth, oh, I look like a prostitute. Basically saying I did it anyways because in my heart of hearts, I'm a whore. This is what I really am. And I know you're judging me negatively, and I'm just going to come out and say it. What I want you to notice in her language, ladies and saints, is that she has expressed to us how she views herself. Huh? Because the first thing she said when I said, I don't know how to introduce you, she said what she thinks I view her as, but also, get this, what she views herself as. Every time I communicate with her, even on DM, she calls herself a hoe, calls herself a 304. She'll say things like, oh, you're not falling in love with the 304, are you? Ah, referring to herself in this low way. Self-negation, degrading. Why? Why? Because it's the truth. They say a joke is an epitaph on an emotion. Not they. I think it was uh, Friedrich Nietzsche. A joke is an epitaph on an emotion, which is to say a joke explains an emotion. There's something, there's some truth there. There's a real feeling there. So she calls herself a brain dead bimbo, knowing that there's a lot of truth in as much as she might be a brain dead bimbo. Now, when I said it to her on the podcast, it was foul. I ain't gonna lie to you, it was foul. But here she is saying that about herself. So let us take note and perhaps make a study of it, huh? Carrying on. I'm trying to be nice, at least to start with. How are you? I'm gonna gotcha. I'm I'm ease it in nice. Like how you did last time? Gonna be nice. I'm gonna try not to. Cocktail sober over here. I'm gonna try, not. and there you go again. More, more insults to the self. And so what she's doing right now is she's taking over and saying, "Hey, Marquette, you don't have to put me down. I'll put down myself." And here's the funny thing: when she's putting down herself, all she's doing is saying, "I will put myself where I'm supposed to be, below you, but I'll also put myself on the low level that society views me on." There's no such thing as a woman who's in the sex industry and actually feels good about herself. Impossible. Never happens. Huh? Never happens. Furthermore, let me tell you something that's comical. Go ahead. Look at baby girl. She has a legitimately pretty face. Absolutely. And I saw a lot of you perverts who can't control yourselves in the chats and in the comments like, yeah, she fine. I smash and all this stuff. Now, here's the funny thing. You see somebody like me that keep it P and keep it player. I'm the one that smashes. I'm just, I'm not talking about her. I'm just talking about in general. I'm the one that smashes. I'm the one, I'm the smasher. You dig? And a part of it is I don't ever, you, you don't really get, hear me get hung up on like, oh, she bad. She fine. Nah, at best, I might tell baby to her face, like you presentable. You dig? And if I'm really feeling it on like a spiritual level, like I told Shorty in the other podcast, I mentioned when I saw her walk straight up to her, lick her dead in her eyes. I say, you mine. <laughs> Turn out to be true. Every time I say it. Now, here's the thing. Good looking girl. Now there in the studio, there's a couple things you can't notice. I want to share this with you because it's the truth. When we're on the whatever podcast, first off, she looked terrible. In my opinion, that pink dress with dark black hair is very unattractive. Powder pink dress, dark black hair is very ugly looking. I was very not impressed with her style or taste, everything about her. It was all off. Anyways, when she showed up this time, she's looking appropriate. You dig? She knows my brand colors are black, red, and white. She showed up in all black. I like that. Number two, it goes better with her overall aesthetic and features and hair coloration. So this was smarter. She looks more presentable, more attractive here. When I was at the whatever podcast, so looking at her from the neck up, her face, that is, I would look at her and I would look at the TV screen, which showed everyone. I was like, whoa, you look hella good on the TV screen. You look good here, right here. You look good in person, but on the TV screen, God, you look really good. Like, these balls got some great cameras. I don't know what kind of voodoo is in the camera, but you look way better on camera. I ain't going to lie to you. So that's number one. Number two, when she was uh, on my podcast sitting right next to me, I'm very close to her in, in this case, I can see that she definitely has a acne and acne scar. So that, that makeup is really caked on in a serious way. You know, this is the kind of chick, you know, you, you go ahead and max her out. You know, she hop in that shower and she come out that shower, man, you're going to be screaming bloody murder because that skin is destroyed. I could tell it from a mile away. She really cakes it on. It's not unusual that Latinas will go heavy on the makeup, especially the super hood ones. You heard me, the Hainas. <laughs> they go turbo hard on that makeup. Back when I was a young boy, they shave off the eyebrows, draw them bitches right back, you dig? But they keep them thin for some reason. I don't know. It's like they weren't trying to make the eyebrow pencil look like an eyebrow. 
I don't know if things have changed in the world of the Chola, uh, but I'm praying. But either way, I still take them because they're loyal as hell, traditional, respectful, feminine. And if you catch a case, they ain't snitching and they coming to visit you in jail. You dig? That's the kind of woman I like. You hear me? That's just me, though. You dig? No snitches over here. And just imagine Shorty right here. She's a real nut. Really thought she was busting me out. She was like, you parked in a handicapped spot. And I'm over here like, okay, well, maybe when you get a quarter of a million dollar car, you'll understand why I did that. You see, if I park way out there in the middle of nowhere where there's no cameras, someone is more likely to vandalize my car just based off of jealousy. They rip the spirit of ecstasy off the front of my Rolls Royce. You guys might be like, spirit of ecstasy, what's that? That's the bonnet emblem on the, on the Rolls Royce. Got an antique Rolls Royce. Somebody rips that off. It's not like the new one where you grab it, it'll just disappear into the hood. It's not like that. So, you know, people vandalize my Rolls Royce in the Aria. So, no, I don't park way out there in Kingdom Come. So if I don't park in Valet, I'm parking in the handicap. And if you want to give me a ticket, I'm going to happily pay the ticket. I'd rather pay, you know, $500,000, $2,000 ticket than have irreparable damage to a, an antique car that's a one of one or to a very expensive car where it's going to cost me much more money to repair it. Furthermore, dummy. I parked in a handicap spot with five empty handicap spots right next to it. It's like, be serious. This is just her grabbing at sticks and straws. You'll notice I didn't engage it when she said it because one, I don't feel bad and I'm definitely doing it again. Believe that. Number two, you don't argue with broads in general. You, there's no need to argue with a broad because that's what they're good at. I'm a businessman. I don't argue. I negotiate. And a negotiation differentiated from argument. Argument is this. That's argument. Nobody wins. Negotiation is going back and forth to figure out who gets what. It's almost a form of politics and politicking. And that I do. I negotiate. But I ain't going to argue with a broad. That's just silly. Get it. Carrying on. Not so I'm going to try to let the chat eat you up. Gotcha. You know, I'm going right. to try to be civilized. I'm going to have better to do. That's now, all right. Now, the first thing that's tripping me out, to be honest with you, is... Mm -hmm. Why are you so crazy to say, you know what? Let me pull up on the big homie and get fried up again. Get fried up again. Again, for a second time. I don't think I got fried up. No. That was insane. Just side note, that was uh, that was actually mentally ill. If you don't think you got fried up, you're you're actually crazy. This video has been reshared in excess of 20 million times and shout out to marquetism shout out to justin uh i hope they're making money on the video i don't know i don't really use instagram to make money uh, but i i hope they are because um isaiah has a video um he's on marquetism on instagram and let me see what that video is doing right now how many views just that one video is at 8.7 million views 8.7 million views a video of me flaming anisa is at 8.7 million views. If you don't follow me on Instagram, check me out, Marquette Devon. You can see how a boss lives. Uh, and then Justin has a video that's, uh, I think, around 2 million. And then a bunch of other people on YouTube have posted this video and they got millions of views. So it, she got slaughtered and the comments validate that. The fact that she wanted to show up again after the slaughter could only mean a couple things. For a person who is black-hearted and wicked, she's seeking vengeance. Huh? She wants to get revenge or she wants to clean up her reputation. Hey, I'm actually a good person. I'm actually a nice person. Or she's coming for clout. Hey, let me promote my OnlyFans so that I can continue to destroy society and push a false narrative that women are making a good living on OnlyFans when most of them, by most, I mean 99.9, .9, are not making much money at all. And it's just like a bit of a side hustle. And we're going to clarify all of those things and we're going to speak to the facts here. So first off, she's denying that she got flamed. So she's certainly the Adrian Brauner of the podcasting space. That's insane, number one. And the other piece subconsciously, why did she come back and get flamed? Because she wants daddy's approval. Yeah, that's right. You know, her pop was not a real masculine dominant man. You know, she's always wanted that. Everyone wants that. You want a patriarch. So she came back to daddy to get daddy's approval so daddy could show her some love so she could feel good about herself. Because here's an important thing to understand, difference in male nature and female nature. This is the truth of things. Female nature uh, has their confidence and self-esteem being externally manipulated. That's why it's so critical that their externality, their appearance is A1. They got to look good, makeup, fake boobs, fake hair pieces, all of this stuff. All of them, the conservative ones, the liberal ones, they all got to look good. Because their confidence is externally defined. Their self-esteem is externally manipulated. 
Now, if it's a conservative woman, a good woman, her self-esteem and confidence is externally manipulated or controlled or influenced by her man, the one man she's dedicated to. You know, if he likes five inch heels, she'll be in five inch heels. If he likes no heels, she'll be in flats. You dig? Now, a harlot is indiscriminate. She wants everyone's approval, everyone's attention. So she's putting on for everybody. That's why she got these low cut shirts on, of course. But when she encounters that patriarch, which represents the father figure, the ideal type of father figure that everyone wants, she didn't have that. She needs my approval. And so she came back to get daddy's love, attention, and approval. You dig? That's why she's back. Oh, we going to get into it. We getting deep out here. Yes, indeed. Shout out to Jaden. He writes, supporting the work. Mac Knowledge Austin, he writes, trying to eight mile herself. <laughs> Bruh, I'm telling you. Shout out to Joseph. Since intuition, may I also acknowledge Dedrick. Oh, he just copped a pretty cool uh, assassin denim jacket at sasmbrand.com. I believe this one runs uh, reads Sassin or nothing on the back. I actually have this exact one. It's a cold piece, has the uh, blue denim with the gold letters on the back. I acknowledged, oh, he actually came right back on manandwomanbrand.com and he copped the athletic shoes. I actually ran in these just last night uh, after Sunday service. I put tremendous number of miles on these bad boys. Yes, indeed. Carrying on. I think I held my own. Hold on wow. one second. Uh, close up camera right here. <laughs> Close up camera. <laughs> Tell me again. You didn't get fried up? I don't think I got fried up. Wow. Wow. For this grown ass man wow. to belittle this person that he just met. Like, oh, I don't damn. think I got fried up. Oh, no, the, the victim mode. Okay, go back here. That was crazy. Yep. Okay. So now, here's the funny thing is they always want to be an empowered woman, an independent woman until it's time to pay a check. They're a feminist until it's time to pay a check, until it's time to, you know, get physical. They're a feminist and an empowered, independent woman until, you know, someone embarrasses them. And then they're instantly a victim. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, poor me, poor me, take pity on me. Nah, nah, I don't want to take pity on you, actually. I, I, I want to give you the equal rights that you, you claim you want. And that's one thing about the ism that they have trouble understanding, which is that, we don't treat all women one way because all women are not one way. There are good women and there are bad females. Good women, we treat accordingly. Bad females, we treat like the dirt that they are. Huh? And it is in stigmatizing a bad female. It is in shunning and condemning a bad female that we show to the world and especially to the children, the young girls, that this is the wrong way. And we disincentivize them from going into this dark lifestyle. And we also disincentivize other adult females from going down that dark road and displaying those bad traits and attitude. Huh? Yes, indeed. We damn near saving the world out here. Yeah. Shout to uh, Heels in came in by a Venmo. He's the only cat that comes in by a Venmo. Appreciate you. Carrying on. So, so first off, so just seriously, you, you said you didn't get fried up. No. Crazy. But you're serious though. Uh, yeah, very serious. That's insane. I think that's your opinion. It's subjective. Like there are some people, you know, who you, reached out to me and thought that uh -huh. you look like a complete jackass and you he's mean and you represented yourself not just he's mean. so mean no i think you represented yourself in a way that from what you know you proclaim to be like uh -huh. may not you know convey that correctly uh -huh. so here's the funny thing i want you guys to understand so when she first encountered me when i first walked i want you this is important saints because you're going to experience this throughout your life. And I, I pray that all of you get into a strong position. And it's very possible for each and every one of you on this live, because I'm teaching the leadership class. I'm teaching the men who want to be elite, not everyday men, men who want to be great. And I want all of you to achieve that. You will notice when you're the junior partner, when you're the younger person, or you're the unimportant person, or you're not the wealthy person, people treat you in a certain way. You ever encounter someone who thinks you're an, a loser or a nobody or a peon? They treat you in a certain way. This happens to me all the time because I'm black. <laughs> you dig? Yes, and I don't mean just in general because I'm black, because I'm black, but I'm often in places where people are very wealthy. huh? And so I'm black and young. I'm not saying young in an absolute sense. I'm saying young compared to all the other wealthy people who are there. So often this happens, you know, it takes them a little bit of time to figure out who I am. And then all of a sudden their attitude changes. It's fascinating. So what happened when I showed up 
she was just like, oh, random black guy in a suit. Oh, wow. He just asked for it. Wow. This guy is mean. He's not playing games. And Adam 22 is a, a rich guy that we all know of. He's like some wealthy podcaster. We all know his name. And, and this guy's showing him no respect. So this guy must also be a big dog. If he's going at the guy I thought was the big dog, he has to be a big dog. Oh, man. Oh, no. Whoa. Whoa. He bit this guy's head off. He bit his head off and took his head like a bowling ball and rolled it down the street. Well, oh, he's playing soccer with Adam 22's head. This guy's ruthless. Then she realizes this, and this is why I tell you money's not the end all be all. When we showed up, all those sex workers, those, those prostitutes, they all knew Adolf 22 because they're all sex workers. Huh? They're prostitutes. They know him. They're in the same industry. So at the beginning, as he had fame, he was the big dog. By the end of the conversation, I had established my dominance and supremacy. So within that closed environment, I was the big dog. His fame didn't matter. His money didn't matter. The only thing that mattered is what occurred within that closed environment. So what is the lesson to you? How can you use this in your life? Because I'm not here to preach for my own good. I'm here to teach you some skills and some mindset that you can use. A frame, a, a framework you can use in your daily life. What can you use? When you're in a closed environment with a woman and you have an opportunity to display your character and she observes it on a consistent basis, character will always win over money and over BS. Huh? Women do like money. And if they like you, they like you better with money. But they will never have a situation where money can unlame a lame. If you're a lame with money, you're still a lame, which means that if there's a cool guy, if you're in a closed environment, there's a guy who's cool and a guy who's lame with money, the cool guy will always ultimately win every single time. That's the part that the pickup artists, the red pill guys don't want to tell you why. Why don't they want to tell you that? Because it's so easy to say, go get money, you're going to get women. It's harder to do the work of improving the, the things about yourself, improving your confidence, your real confidence, not pretending you're confident. That's the hard work, huh? Come on now. So anyways, by the end of that, she realized who the big homie was. I say that to say this, the way she's talking right now, saying, my friends called me up and they DM me and they told me that, you know, really they were just saying, oh, I feel bad for you. <laughs> He's mean, right? They weren't telling you the truth. That's why they're your friends. They're on your side. They're there to pick you up. But here's the important piece. When she was trying to talk to me about her getting flamed, she said, I don't think you represented yourself as the kind of guy you say you are. Where did she get a concept of what I say I am? After that podcast, when she realized who the big dog is, what she do? Google.com, Marquette Devon Burton. Oh, oh, really? Let me watch this video. Oh, okay. Oh, he knows. Oh, oh, he's friends with. Oh, wait, his net worth is what? Oh, let me DM on DM him on IG real quick. Didn't he say he lived in Vegas? Yeah, things change all of a sudden. She got some background information, realized what's what. Now she wants to treat the king like the king. Huh? Yeah, that's how it happens. Yeah, they Google your name all of a sudden. Big smile. Happens to me all the time. True story. Yeah, sometimes when I go through resorts in Las Vegas, I'm usually wearing a suit, a business suit, a fine suit. People with common sense can tell, ah, he's somebody. Sometimes I'll go through wearing a ball cap, look like a regular black guy. Oh, they, they tend to behave differently. Then if there's an issue, I say, hey, go get your boss. Then when the boss comes, the boss, they have facial recognition technology throughout all the casinos. If you didn't know, they have facial recognition through all of them. They, oh, I know who this guy, because my profile pops up. Oh, yeah, yeah. The boss goes to the employee. Hey, hey, show that guy some damn respect. Oh, problem solved. They come in. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Burton. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. This is how they act. These are people with no decency and integrity because they don't want to treat you right until they find out you have money. They don't want to treat you right until they find out you have status. They don't want to treat you right until they find out you're willing to be violent. Obviously, getting money, status, and willing to be violent, those are all things you might try out in your life, might help you in your life. I'm just keeping it real with you. Keep an eye out. Carrying on. Uh, okay. I think you represent yourself in a very negative light, but I mean, that could be uh -huh. what you do on these platforms. You, you know, know what? And I'm mind. really oh. interested to get into that conversation because for me, there's a differentiation between types of people. I'm not mm -hmm. going to lie to you, right? Mm -hmm. 
And so I got a three sentence Bible. Number one, be yourself. Mm -hmm. Number two, be good to yourself. And number mm -hmm. three, be good to good people. So let's look at the oh, good people. Gotcha. Be good yeah. to good people. Okay. Good people. And you get to decide who the good people are that you To me, to right? To. to me. Yeah, yeah, to me. Gotcha. So with regards to women, let, let's dig into that real quick, right? Mm -hmm. What's your definition? Now, one thing you'll notice with body language, her leg keeps kicking up and down. This is called a, a, a nervous tick. Her, her front leg is going up and down, up and down, up and down. It's letting you know that she's not relaxed. Her mind is not at ease. She's waiting for it. And in fact, she was in a nerve wracking position for the entirety of the interview. What she had experienced with me in person was a pit bull. So when she came in, she's nerve wracked, even though she's here to try to regain some of her respect and try to defeat me as her goal. That's why she's being so rude and unpleasant. But she knew that I'm vicious and I can be vicious. And so the whole time she's waiting for me to show my teeth or to show the claws. And so that's what this leg here is just showing me and confirming that she's not at ease the whole time. That's all that is right there. It's just a reminder that she's not at ease. Shout out to Juan. He went on sassandbrand.com. He just got the 3M reflective hoodie. I actually took a run in this very hoodie last night because it's reflective. I was running late at night. It's a great piece, and it also keeps you very warm. So shout out to him. All that money does not go to me. It goes to Brandon. Shout out to Brandon. He's a longtime saint. Good guy. I also acknowledge by a cash app. Shout out to Jaden. He writes, supporting the work. Came in consistently. Appreciate you. And we are going to get deep into some ism here. May I acknowledge uh, Amari. He writes, it's hilarious how in the comments on the viral Instagram clip, there are slores and simps in the comments who keep saying, quote, I bet he watches porn, though. Now, you know, it's funny. This is completely true. I've seen the same thing, and it saddens me about the low level of our society. But also, let me remind all of you, there is a such thing as good. There is a such thing as evil. There are good people on this earth, and there are evil people on this earth. The evil people, one of their chief tools is deceit. They lie. How is it that people are saying, because I'm speaking up against an OnlyFans model, that I watch porn? Doesn't make logical sense. The person who speaks up against an OnlyFans model, probably less likely to be a porn watcher. That's number one in terms of likelihood. Number two, in actual fact, I do not watch pornography. In actual fact, not only have I never purchased an OnlyFans, I would never purchase an OnlyFans. That's an insane concept. I don't get it. So that being the case, the question is, why would they try to make up something that they can't validate, that they don't know to be true? And in fact, has nothing to do with the argument. The argument of saying OnlyFans is bad, doesn't matter if I watch porn or not, which I don't, but they lie and distract. This is the evil in these people. Oh, he watches porn. You don't even know the guy. You, you, you don't even know the guy. It's a random guy in a video with 8 million views and you're acting like you know them. That's what we're dealing with. And one thing I want to warn all of you about, someone like me, they hate. When I say they, I'm talking about the wicked among us. Don't drink alcohol at all. I don't even know what it tastes like. Have never tasted alcohol. Don't smoke cigarettes. Don't smoke cigars. Don't engage in all variety of filth like consuming pornography. So what's going to happen? They can only make up lies. I will warn you all, as our movement expands and grows, you will hear all variety of lies. They're going to try to hashtag me too. They're going to try to throw in like ludicrous sexual cases. And none of this is true because I'm not a sex pervert. I'm a very vanilla person. I have more than enough women. I don't need to go out for new women, but they're going to make up stuff. So I warn you all to be prepared for this because it's coming. He, there was even, I kid you not, I think the video, uh, I'm going to re-upload the video if I need to. Uh, there was an old white woman, like an old fat white woman from God knows where, had literally went on and tried to claim that I was like showing her my meat on a FaceTime call. I was like, this, I don't even know you, lady. What the hell? And I don't know if someone put it up to her or paid her to do this. Who knows? But the, as soon as this allegation came out, first thing I said was what? Where's the video? Where's the photo? Like, if I'm on a whole FaceTime call with you swinging my meat around, just screenshot it. That's all you got to do. Just click screenshot. Everyone knows how to screenshot on their phone. You're lying. So I want to warn you all, this is going to happen to me. And here's the thing. If you become successful, it'll happen to you as well. Be prepared. Know that the lies will come. Anyways, he writes, and men criticize OnlyFans but watch. The fact is most, the overwhelming majority of men do not purchase OnlyFans. And in fact, even of those who watch pornography, most men who consume pornography do not also consume OnlyFans. It's just not the case. This is statistically untrue. 
The gentleman further writes, these degenerates always pre-assume everyone participates in filth just to make themselves feel better. That's correct. And one thing we have to know is that people who engage in filth, they always want to get others to behave the same way because it makes them feel better about what they do. You ever notice people are willing to buy you a shot, right? They'll be in, at the bar like, shots for everyone, shots on me, yeah, yeah, shots on me. And they're like buying shots or handing them out. Yeah, they're happy to give that out. You ever see somebody buying books and just handing them out with like super, super happy? People invite you to a party. Do they invite you to the gym at the same level? Huh? Do they buy you books at the same level they're willing to buy you a shot? Huh? No. When they're doing evil, wicked things, they want to share so they're not the only one that'll end up with a hangover. They're not the only one suffering, destroying themselves. Come on now. Shout to T supporting the work. Appreciate you. Carrying on. Definition of a hoe. My definition. Oh, pay of attention. A hoe. I like yeah. this one. What's your definition of a hoe? My definition of a hoe. Yeah. Look at that leg. Still moving. I mean, I guess it's my definition of a hoe would probably be a woman who puts herself in situations that she probably shouldn't have. I wouldn't think a hoe is someone who's sleeping around. That's on not only fans. You said uh, that that was crazy. She literally stated, I would not say a hoe is someone who's sleeping around. What? What? That's like me saying, what is a what is a black person? And you're like, I would not say a black person is an African. What the what the that's exactly what a black person is. Like she said, I would not say a hoe is someone who's sleeping around or is on OnlyFans. Notice, why would she give why would she? I didn't ask her what a hoe is not. Uh, she's telling on herself. I didn't say what is a hoe not. I wouldn't say a hoe is a, a someone who's sleeping around or is on OnlyFans. Well, that's what a hoe is not. Tell me what a hoe is. That's what I asked you. But she's telling on herself. That's what she's doing. But you'll see consistently lies. I told you evil people, they're all about deception, lying. So she's lying here. And the reason that I asked her this is because psychologically, these demons, these sex workers, they cannot accept that they are a low person or that they are a hoe. Here's why. Here's why they have to lie to you. The human psyche, we must think enough of ourselves or else we're going to end it. If we don't think enough of ourselves, we're going to end it. We don't feel like we're valuable or worthwhile people. So psychologically, we all have to have some level of ego such that we feel we are worthy of life itself. When the sex worker looks in the mirror and sees what is really there, understands the despicable nature of their behavior and continues to persist in that behavior, if they were honest about who they really are and how they're behaving in the society, then they would probably feel very low and very depressed and thereby want to end it. So they develop this duality split in two psychologically saying, yes, I do bad things. I do bad things, but I'm not a bad person. Listen to me. I do bad things on a consistent basis in an unrepentant way, but I'm not a bad person. That is the psychological duality that allows them to survive, which is why you will never get the truth out of them. Even during the whatever podcast you heard Adolf 22 say something that was truly inane. He stated, he's like, you know, all the women over here, like, you know, we're on a different level. You're not on our level. Imagine a pornographer a a prostitute telling you who cares who you are that you're not on their level if that's not like uh, delusion what is <laughs> right like that's crazy that's like a homeless person licking you in your eye like a homeless person walks into starbucks picks out a random person like you're not on my level what you're the lowest person in the society you're a pornographer you get naked and get fucked for your money. Literally, you get fucked for your money. You're a prostitute. You're the lowest person in society. <laughs> Everyone's above your level. Forget me. Everyone is above your level. What do you? If I had to invite someone to dinner and it was the choice between a pornographer and a drug addict, give me the drug addict. A difference between a prostitute, a known prostitute, and, and like some other low person, give me the other person. Because... I would feel like you're defiling my family. If I had a daughter, I wouldn't want her to look upon you and know what you do on a regular basis. It's that disgusting and down low. Come on now. 
But listen to her try to give a definition of a hoe. And this is actually who she is. You would think she'd be able to give it straight away. She's babbling. I, I, not think, a hoe. I think she could maybe be a hoe, but like, I would say more so like, hey, you know, this man is married. You know, this man has a girlfriend and you're inserting yourself in this situation. I okay. would consider that more of a hoe. Uh -huh. If a woman's single, it's not something that I agree with sleeping around. <laughs> okay. You don't I, agree with sleeping I don't, around. I don't, I don't think, you're not down. I don't think casual sex is beneficial to women. I don't think it benefits women. Why is that? Uh, you know what I wish Marquette would have asked her at this point? I wish Marquette would have said, not why is that, but how did you find that out? I wish Marquette would have said, how did you find out that casual sex does not benefit a woman? How did you discover that? I think men and women, I think we're different. I think. Yeah, yeah, think for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's. It's just not in women's best interest to sleep around. Um, okay. Did you tell us how many bodies? Now, I want you guys to notice. I asked her the question, but she didn't answer. She just repeated what she said three times. She didn't elaborate. She didn't explain. She merely repeated three times. It lets you know she's hiding something. So notice, if you ever ask a woman a question and she gives you a statement that requires evidence or explanation or example, and she just repeats that initial statement, whether it's in the same words or different words, she's being evasive and she's lying. So all she said is, I just don't think it benefits women. Why is that? How do you know? How did you find out? She just said three times, I just don't think it benefits women. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, for a fact, you've slept around with a lot of people and you realize that you're in a bad situation. Imagine being as gorgeous as she is in the face. And at age 28, you don't have a man. You don't have a man. That's bad. That's it's almost an accomplishment because guys are so damn thirsty. I was disgusted in the comments. Thirsty as dudes. Oh, she fine. She bad. She huge. Oh, man, she bad. What's the OF link? What's her at? Like, wow. Get a life, buddy. Get a life. I'm sitting right next to her and I'm not on her the way you on her and you're in the chat in Alaska. Like, that's crazy. It's disgusting. The perverted male is the true poison in our society. We got to get these balls under control. Bodies you had? I didn't say how many bodies I had, no. Oh, you did? But it's it's one hand. So. Uh, uh, bring the motherfucking close-up camera again. <laughs> She said the bodies are on one hand. Uh, is it a normal human hand or a mutant hand? How many normal. fingers are on the hand? How many fingers are on that hand? Five. Less than five. You just going to look me in my eyes and, and lie to me like that? No. That's amazing. No, I'm not. Uh, amazing. And the people that know me know they know I'm telling this. And that was nonsense. The people that know me. Okay, so the people that know you are always with you because you came to this podcast by yourself. So... If the podcast ends and I like fuck the living daylights out of you in here, like they're going to be aware of that. Stop it. You're making up nonsense. Shout out to Nate Dow. He writes, I want to rent a building for a great business idea. However, after the current business using the building uh, moves, the building will be demolished. Any advice in preventing the demolition and securing the building? Nate, I actually did see this question that you had put on Sunday service. And forgive me, I initially listed Sunday service at um, at 5 a.m. instead of p.m. That was my mistake. And I do want to apologize to you and everyone else who has very valuable time. All of you do. Um, but we did answer that question during Sunday service. So I advise you to check on the last Sunday service and I answer it at length as well. But long story short, um, the summary to the question, but do go back and listen, is the summary to the question. The answer is um, invest your time in greater pursuits, which is to say, uh, trying to get them not to demolish that building is unlikely. You better to invest your time in finding a better building. Thank you for that question, Saint. Carlos writes, Peace of Saints. I typed a question in the chat outside of him needing condoms, obviously. How can we as men fight against the continued demoralization of being a man? How should, oh, excuse me, he should have had some ism from the big homie in a real way, bro, in a real way. And let, let me make sure I address all that. Peace of saints. I typed question in chat. Um, so the best thing to do if you have, if you send in a super chat or a cash app, well, really your super chats, you, you just type it right here. But if you send in a cash app or PayPal, and for some reason you need to send the question separately, you can just send it to that email there. Anyways, he writes, outside of him needing condoms, obviously, how can we as men fight against the continued demoralization in being a man? Okay. 
he should have had some yeah so number one the key is to come together which is to say you must be organized you must be together when they always try to isolate you so that they can victimize you the government itself is merely a street gang they monopolize monopolize violence within this political territory so in as much as possible you have to come together with other men of similar values and that is when we begin to fight and to right things that are wrong precisely why we invite all of you to come to saint city or to find your local uh, assassin section and there are many things that we have going on right now but that's just the basic shout out to joshua supporting the work appreciate you i acknowledge sam he writes peace of the saints do you agree with the notion that it is better to date a seven rather than a ten nine eight because they're much uh, too much maintenance and may also be vain and narcissistic uh, every woman who is very uh, attractive is going to react to the environment that she's in. And so in as much as uh, most guys are thirsty, pathetic animals, increasingly so today, yes, the more attractive the woman is, the least likely she is to be competent, have good personality and good skills. So I wouldn't not date a woman because she's a eight, nine, 10, but I would be cautious of her. And I would know that she's more likely to be incompetent and have a bad attitude, which in my experience is definitely the case right now. I'm just like cycling through a number of women in my head that I deal with who are gorgeous and they're either completely idiotic, uh, have horrible attitudes. They're dishonest. Um, they, they have attention issues like it, all bad so generally yeah that seven is going to be more solid there's no doubt about that and i'm telling you from experience and no one on the internet has had badder chicks in greater numbers than yours truly and i've had them all around the world the finest cream of the crop you dig and what i'm talking about are side pieces you know these are side pieces the dimes the side pieces you hear me a real man his main woman is not about beauty it's about competence it's about goodness and he writes, uh, I hope you keep doing collabs. You know, perhaps. Actually, let's not say perhaps. Let's say we should do it. You're right. It seems to be a good thing. Juan writes, Peace of the Saints. She lied a total of 156 times and kept calling you a lot. I know it's that was her strategy. You could tell she came in with a strategy. She was really trying to stick to her script. He writes, you, have an, you have enormous patience. I, I do have patience for some things. I was getting frustrated for you. I just ordered the Saint and the Sinner hoodie. Keep spreading the gospel. Indeed, I saw that. And, and you're going to enjoy that product. It's a really cool product. People definitely are going to compliment you on it. King Toon supporting the work. Appreciate you. May I also acknowledge, you guys just received the men's athletic shorts. And shout out to all the folks who have those. Those are like basically our uniform shorts when we link up and get our workout in. He writes, Assassin Brand Black Hoodie and Camo Packable Jacket. The Packable Jackets went crazy. I remember when those were just selling like insane i actually discontinued those on manandwomanbrand.com uh they're just selling crazy uh and you might say well why would you discontinue it if it's selling crazy because i don't want everybody to have it that's why i don't want everybody to have it uh shout out to uh viva specifico uh, supporting the work now so acknowledge jason he writes your content was the slap in the face i needed to quit weed 44 days ago you know what that means a lot to me because uh, drugs, intoxicants, alcohol, they destroy us. So I appreciate you sharing that good news and you make yourself better and you make the world better at the same time when you do that. He writes, I'm happy to announce that today I accept an ADK job offer. Very good. Congratulations. Immense thanks. My next smart goal is 120K. Peace of the saints. Congratulations. And may we all wish him well, wish him much success. Shout out to Taylor, always supporting the work. Acknowledge counselor, Mr. G writes, Marquette, just stopping by. I'm a, I'm in a whole different time zone. I don't often catch many shows live salute on another body or two. People need to know the value of honor over internet fame. See that part, that part honor. Talk about it. Hope to chop up more games sometimes. Absolutely. Appreciate the support. Shout out to, uh, Jacob supporting the work as well. Appreciate you carrying on. Let's get in. The truth. They know that's how I really feel. How do they know? They um, I mean Okay, so I let me that. just do some math real quick. Yeah. Just let me just break down the lies real quick. Okay. Break down the lies. Yeah. Uh, and then we're gonna get into this. So you're currently twenty eight. Yeah. When'd you lose your virginity? If when you was, don't mind. When I was twenty five. Watch how she reacts to what I said. 
we'll talk about that offline because I know what that's about. I've had this situation before. I actually know what that means. Gotcha. So we'll, I'm not even going to get into that right now. Okay. But just know that I know ready to move why on? that is. She gotcha. just accepted okay. it. Okay. She accepted so it. So if you on. theoretically lost your virginity at 25 and then you are now 28, I can understand how that, that adds up. Yeah. But that's sus as hell, but we're not going to discuss that why right now. Why is that sus? You know why that's sus. Why Anyways, is that sus? Uh, let's go ahead and take a pause for the cause, and we're going to really get into this. Uh, Major cap. Uh, go ahead. 25? We Stop have this. David sent $50 on PayPal. Baller alert. He says, tuition for the big homie. Hope In a real all way. is well, Sage. Peace to the big way. Reviewing because I'm impressed at your perspective. You know, you kind of like this one boxer named uh, Adrian. What's uh, Adrian Bronner? Uh, this motherfucker will lose a boxing match. And then afterward, they're like, Adrian, how do you feel like you did? He's like, man, I don't know what the judges were thinking. I was, I knocked him out. And we're like, Adrian, that, that did not happen. I don't know where you were. Mm -hmm. You might have CTE because yeah. that's very inaccurate, sir. Yeah. yeah. So I think, I don't know if you had CTE. <laughs> did you ever play football or anything? I didn't play any uh, contact no sports. sports. No, that's no crazy. physical contact. Okay. I did play sports, but not football. I like the confidence, though. Yeah. Volleyball is volleyball. Off the, off the... I don't think, I don't think I got bodied. I think, wow. did you come at me? Did you probably, you know, kind of punk me, you know? in your terms, you know, to you, uh -huh. did some people think you pro pro probably punked me? Yes. Was I caught off guard? Yes. Okay. Um, but I do think I stood my ground. Oh, no. Now, what you'll see consistently with delusional persons, especially females, is that because they rarely get checked, they rarely get put in their place, especially when they didn't grow up with a proper father. They haven't experienced discipline. They haven't experienced consequences. They haven't been told no. Huh? When they meet a real man who has standards and he says, no, that won't work or no, I'm not going to give you that or no, we're not going to go there or no, you won't have your way. If the sentence starts with no, oh, they start to break down psychologically. Oh, they don't like that. So they can't accept no. And mind you, that's one of the major disqualifiers for me. You can never be a main chick if you can't accept the concept of no. And many chicks can't. Moreover, because they never come into conflict, they're not used to getting rejected or they're not used to losing. When they do lose, they can't accept it and admit it. It's amazing. Males are conditioned to have to, you know, put themselves out there and get rejected. Whereas with women, nope, they get things so easily. They don't understand rejection. And most importantly, they can't accept rejection. And the funny thing, she knows I don't approve of her lifestyle. I would never want to be with someone like her. And what does she do? The whole interview, you're going to watch it bit by bit. Oh, he's in love with me. Would you ever date a woman like me? Would you ever date someone who has an OnlyFans? Why is that a relevant question? Unless you would like me to be in love with you and to date you and can take you seriously. Huh? They can't accept rejection. And it's hard for a good looking woman to understand because there's very few men who have true standards. And what happens is when I reject them and push them away, all it does is make them want to hunt me. You hear me? Now they turn into the hunter and I'm the beautiful woman. It's deep. But there, you're, there you're are, tough. I'm going to give you that. There are like points that i did miss like afterwards i was like fuck you know i should have told him he was that. watching that shit on replay think, no i didn't uber. watch it i haven't watched it no on, and uber on your way back oh, home no. just watching that shit i went i fell asleep on the way home no All that right. shit did not like that shit like doesn't bother me what you okay. think about me Stop doesn't it. affect me at Stop all it. like what most that doesn't that's not true at all because she keeps calling herself a brain dead 304 which is what I called her. And so in as much as that's the case, she now further has that identity cemented into her mind based on my words. Anytime a woman claims what people think of her doesn't matter. Well, then if that's the case, uh, here's a wet rag. Wipe all that makeup off of your face, love. Since you don't care what other people think, don't spend so much money on your hair, dear. You don't care what people think. Why are you walking on stilts? You're walking on high heels. That's strange. That's not good for your physiology. They absolutely care. It's a complete lie. Now, if a man says he doesn't care what women think or what people think, you might be able to take that to the bank. Uh, real men, you know, we're happy being fat, stupid, and ugly. We don't care. Like, I could clearly go get hair plugs. I don't care. One thing I will tell you is I hate when people have harsh vertical light and it shines down on my head and my head be shining. It just looks bad on camera because the head's shining on camera. It's a distraction. But do I really have any major care or concerns about like not getting hair and going to get hair plugs like Jay Waller or BBMLD? No, no, I have no major concerns about that because I'm a real man. So you're not going to see me walking around in skinny jeans with hair plugs. People think about me. Like, what that people doesn't think about me. What people think about doesn't me. Doesn't bother you. Know it what? Doesn't me. I believe that. Yeah. I actually believe that if you're gonna do OF, you pretty much said, "Look, <laughs> look." Does your do your parents know you do OF? Now, what did I just do there? 
And a number of times you're going to see me play her game with her, right? You're going to see me give ground. Or you're going to see me concede, or you're going to see me say something that frankly, we all know is not true. We all know is not how I really feel or what I really believe. And I'm doing it to see if I can open her up in a particular way. Oh, this is crazy. I think my sass and water just got here. I, I told you guys, I've been wanting to get into the water game. So I, I got a whole bunch of cases of water. I don't even know where I'm going to pull. I just saw an enormous UPS truck pull up. Uh, so I might have to take a pause. <laughs> this is going to be crazy. Um, but anyways, so I just told her, I said, you know what? I believe you. I believe that you don't care what people think of you. So it's basically me saying, yeah, I buy into your, your delusions. Like, yeah, like all the crazy things you claim, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm right there with you. So I'm trying to open her up. I'm putting her at a state of ease so that she can give me more. Huh? So I'm giving to take. So yeah, let, let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Word. Mm. That's deep. We're and it was something that. I contemplated about. Do your parents believe that if you're gonna do OF, you pretty much said, "Look, <laughs> look." Does your do your parents know you do OF? Yeah. Word. Mm. That's deep. We're and it was something that. I contemplated about for a long time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think a huge reason was because of my family. I do have a very good relationship with my father, with mm -hmm. the men in my. Now that's very interesting. Why is it that she said I have a good relationship with my father? The reason she said that is anticipation. She anticipates that everyone's going to say you had a bad father, you had an absent father. And so in anticipation, she wants to address that before anyone else addresses it. And this is what women do. You know, they're great planners, they're great manipulators. This is their skill set. In fact, a, a guy, if he manipulates you effectively, he's sharp. He's well studied, he's experienced, he's seasoned. If a woman manipulates you, that's like breathing and blinking. <laughs> she didn't have to learn how to do that. And that's why women are often like, well, why do you guys have all these videos talking about women? It's because you guys are so amazingly manipulative. Your chess game is tremendous. Like we have to learn some strategy just to be able to contend with you guys. That's why. Shout out to Ill Rude supporting the work. Appreciate you. I also acknowledge Parth. He writes, paying what I owe. Piece of the same. It's good to hear from you, Parth. Shout out to Othello. And Parth is a gentleman I had the pleasure of meeting uh, in a consultation. So it's always a pleasure to see familiar names. Uh, shout out to Othello. He writes, Mr. Burton, good to see you again, sir. Actually, I'm not supposed to be reading uh, these. Do forgive me. Assistance usually here. We're reading $15 and above. But you guys are all appreciated and do know I always rewatch the streams and, and check back on these things. And so a number of you guys have received emails from me because we always make sure that we show love to those who show love to us. Shout out to Austin. He writes, is there wisdom in not revealing your true age while spitting game? Um, I'm going to answer that right now. Give me a second. Let me just make sure that this guy isn't trying to get in and deliver like all these waters. Be right back. Sending your questions now, folks. Road and disappeared. This freight is extraordinarily expensive. So they'll even try to charge me for a weed delivery. But the UPS guy is actually not at his truck right now. So I'm going to take a picture just so that they know my door is literally open. All right, let's get back to this work. <clears throat> and this is a good question. A lot of real players have had this question before with regards to age, because age can be a funny thing, especially in this society where, you know, women are clinically immature, men too, the Western society. Austin writes, is there a wisdom in not revealing your true age while spitting game? I think there's a wisdom in not revealing much in general. So yes, that's correct. And secondly, I especially are like the, there's two anxieties, right? Is you're a young guy spitting game at a chick who's older than you. She might be a coog, might be a milf but she's attractive enough or she's slizzard or she with it and you're ready to get it in. So you're a young guy. You don't want to say what your age is because then it might kind of take you out of the game or you're an older gentleman 
you're trying to get you some fresh water. And so you don't want to say your age because you think it might take you out of the game. Generally speaking, neither of those things are true. When a chick is ready to do what she's going to do, she's going to do it as it turns out. So when you share your age and she's like, oh, you're too young, you're a baby. Or if you share your age and she's like, oh, you're too old. Those are called excuses. And so in, in the absence of her just keeping it real with you and saying, I'm not attracted or I'm not interested or I'm not in the mood or I have a boyfriend or whatever the case may be, she's using that as yet another excuse because she's going to do what she wants to do. So truth be told, the truth is always is not always is usually a good thing. If you guys have taken Boston University, which I think you can get at the sassin.com, T H E S A S N.com. If not, someone dropped the link for them. I have a whole section about who to give the truth to and who is not worthy of the truth. The truth is a precious thing. So Austin, I agree. I would definitely keep not only my age, but just the facts of my life in general on the low. And in fact, I love to meet women who have never heard of me. I like to meet women who don't know what my status might be or what my income might be. I'd rather just meet a woman and present myself. And if she's interested, you know, then we can make something happen. He writes, I noticed a pattern in game spitters not revealing their age. One more question. How would you respond when a cougar says, quote, you're too young for me, end quote, or I could be your mom? Usually you don't respond. When they say dumb things like that, women are not logical beings, so you don't use logic to deal with them, right? They're emotional beings. So often I would just basically just ignore what they're saying or chuckle and carry on. Um, but if they're taking you out of the game, it is what it is. Uh, but the fact is when she says, I could be your mom, ah, but you're not my mom, right? So it, it doesn't matter. That would be the same uh, from a logic standpoint. Now, mind you, they're not logical, so this is irrelevant. But logically, if you wanted to answer their question, you'd say, she said, oh, I could be your mom from an age perspective. Okay, but you're not my mom, so that's irrelevant. Similarly, if we were the same age, I could say, you could be my sister, right? We're the same age, so we should be able to smash, right? But you could be my sister. Well, you're not my sister, so we're going to smash. So logic is not relevant. Ignore it and see what you can do. I acknowledge Jordan. He writes, would you ever consider having a conversation with MTR? Yeah, I would. He is one of the more respectable individuals in the community. I think both audiences could benefit for sure. The question is, you know, who would host it? What would the conversation be about? I'd be happy to have that conversation on his channel or on my channel. If you'd like to set it up, I give you my full blessing. May I acknowledge Vilkin? He writes, Peace of Saints. Marquette, you are absolutely right when you made that statement about when you don't have plenty of something. You tend to hold on tight. That's correct. I've the girl I doctor filled at work and I told you about, she's starting to slip away a bit through body and less, I don't know, this might be a, a typo, but less texting. I hate this feeling and you're right. I need plenty more of these females. Any insight if I'm, uh, any insight if I'm out of the game? Yeah. So long story short, Vilkin, at the end of the day, you have to spit more game. That's all there is to it. And the worst thing is for you to have actually gotten this female. The reason breakups hurt us so badly is because a lot of you guys, when you break up with the girl, you're sitting on zero. You're on E. You dig? When she left the stable, now the stable's empty. Now, if you was a real P, you know what I mean? Of course, our lifestyles and our interests may be different. Maybe you just want to be a square with one chick. Fantastic. Good for you. More for me. But, you know, every day of my life, there are multiple respectable, upright, good women that are vying and competing for my time. And if I were to lose one woman, it would free up time and I could easily fill that time with another woman or more, more work. So it wouldn't be empty time for me to sit there and muse over what will never again be for me to sit there and mourn over the ashes of a burned bridge. So that being the case, your life should be filled with good things, great pursuits and ambitions, and also other attractive, worthwhile women. And a lot of these broads are dim-witted. So as a result, you got to have like three broads to add up to one decent broad. You dig? You got to smash them together just to make one decent broad. That's not the reason people engage in polygyny. I'm just kind of being uh, uh, humorous there. But uh, there's some truth to it too. You dig? Anyways, yeah, go spit some more game. I tell all of you guys, you should be doing a three a day, engaging with at least three women and uh, exchanging contact information with three women per day because so many of them are unreliable. And even the ones that you might not convert to something that say you want – 
you still might have the opportunity to get network with that chick. She might introduce you to a friend. You might invite her to a friend. Yes, she brings her boyfriend, but she brings two of her homegirls. You know, if you invite her to a party, that is, I, I might have misstated that. So the point is that there is value in that three a day. I highly recommend it. Carrying on. Bill Rude looks like he sent in more to have this question answered. He writes, you obliterated Anissa on the podcast and how she honed in on you throughout the podcast and after is a master example of how women can fall in love with a guy that puts her in her place properly. That's correct. She will fall in love, but she won't behave. She will only behave in spurts. You know, she'll behave in the bedroom. She'll behave sometimes in public. But over time, her true, wicked, unruly, unpleasant nature will inevitably come out. And what happens with women like Anissa, they are the most dangerous because they have a pretty face and in her case, an inflated body. And some of us find those things to be appealing. And as a result, we lose our decency, our integrity and our principles. And we think, uh, well, you know, she's really attractive. I might as well wife her up and hold on to her because I want to look good. You see, low self-esteem men, they want to look good to everyone out there. So they want to have the beautiful woman and show her off so that they can feel like they're a big deal or like they're cool, they're important. A real boss, they're like, I don't need my woman to look good because anyone who knows the caliber of man I am, they know that this is a high caliber woman. I have her for a reason. She doesn't need to look like a supermodel. In fact, I remember last time I was in uh, Panama, I was in Panama with a, a a guy I know named Rick, older Jewish guy, very wealthy gentleman, divorced now, and uh, had my lady with me. You know, Rick wanted to go to dinner. He brings his lady, chick that he had recently married. She's like a 23 year old Colombian woman, brain dead, man, just utterly brain dead. And I was just like, I was almost offended, like Rick, bro, like, like on some real ish, like don't bring your side piece to dinners with my main piece. You hear me is disrespectful because there's nothing for my main piece to discuss with your side piece because your side piece is a dumb broad. Like get the days together, my boy. Like if this was like side piece day, I bring my side piece, you bring your side piece. They can hang out together. They're in the same age range and they both are dumb. They can hang out and make friends and play patty cake, you know, but don't bring your side piece when I bring my main piece, man. Bring someone who's worthwhile, who's done something, who's competent and intelligent. Here's the worst thing. His, his, his wife is a side piece. He married a side piece. And the thing is he did it because she's beautiful. And she was, she was attractive, but she's a dimwit. I remember we were talking during the dinner, true story. And, uh, my main piece says, Oh, well, what do you do? And she says, Oh, I don't work. Well, duh. We know you don't work. You know, like none of us. You're like, yeah. What do you do though? Is what she asked you. She said, Oh, I'm a personal shopper. What? What is that? <laughs> What is that? Right. And so we're trying to relate to her. Right. Because she's brain that we're trying to be nice and relate to her. And we're like, what's a personal shopper? And she's like, oh, you know, you go and you shop for people. You pick out nice pieces for like, you know, you know, wealthy people who don't want to do their own shopping. I was like, oh, kind of like a stylist or something. She's like, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, you know what? I just, you know, I'm, you know, in the fashion business, I have this loafer product. Hey, check this out. What do you think of this? I have women's skirts. What do you think of this? And you could tell that she like still wasn't even able to relate to things that are kind of in adjacent uh, markets. I was like, this girl's an idiot. And I was just looking at Rick like, bro, you're, you're a loser, my boy. Like, why are you falling in love with a stripper? And why would you have the audacity to make me suffer through having to deal with her? I ain't getting no coochie from this bra. I don't have to deal with dummies on my spare time when they're not necking me up. You heard me? If she ain't giving me the sloppy toppy, get her away from me. You dig? Anyways, Othello writes, my apologies. I'm coming in a bit late. If I've missed it, uh, could you break down the ism? Sir, we shall be breaking down ism this whole, whole uh, video. Indeed. And it shall be deep. And for those of you who are like, what is the ism? The ism is Marquetteism. The ism is a way of seeing the world, but more importantly, it, it's greater than just a perspective. It's also how do you operate in the world such that you can secure prosperity and happiness on a consistent basis. By the way, shout out to the ballers. The ballers are back. Baller alert. Emmanuel writes, gratitude, appreciate you. Shout out to Marcellus Jordan. Just had the pleasure of speaking with him recently in a consultation. Shout out to the men who invest in themselves. You dig? That's why I remember two years ago, I was in um, I was in Colombia, in Cartagena. I was in Cartagena, Colombia, two years ago. I remember that like it was yesterday. I was in a high rise looking out at the pool and the ocean at the same time. Gorgeous view. And I remember I did a Christmas stream and I said, for Christmas, I want you to invest in yourself. I want the only Christmas gift you get 
to be for yourself. Invest in yourself. And to this day, I still mean that. And I encourage you to do that very thing. Shout out to DKB supporting the work as well as El Santo. He writes, Saint, quote, I ain't called my main chick in weeks. If I did, she'd probably trip anyways. So I'm playing with these girls in the streets. <laughs> Look, bars. Uh, he writes, MDB, Peace of the Saints, in a real way. You dig? In a real way. If I told you my real life, you wouldn't believe it. Shout out to Jordan. He writes, message via, okay, so he sent the message via email. I currently don't see it. I will check the spam as this plays. My family. I think that was a huge reason why it took me so long to lose my virginity, honestly. I, I had a lot of... I think respect for my family. I didn't want, I'm from a very small town. And I think, you know, kind of words get around yeah, and for sure. like, I never want. See, none of this actually makes any sense because her story is that I'm from a small town. So being that I'm from a small town, word gets around. Okay, so now you're going on a podcast. It's one of the most popular dating podcasts in the world. You don't think word's going to get around? Please stop it. It's nonsense. Uh, so you're lying. And furthermore, your name that you're going by is your legal name. I know this because my team uh, has researched and found out that, yes, that is in fact her name. We know what her real estate holdings are, which are largely, uh, which are insignificant. And um, well, that's crazy. UPS uh, is leaving. Anyways, so you're not hiding from anyone. This is all lies and nonsense. I wanted someone to be able to be like, oh, I fucked this dude's daughter. I've never fucked anyone from my hometown. That's so stupid. Like, that made no sense. First off, at some point, someone's going to have to F this dude's daughter. And what's far more embarrassing than someone effing this dude's daughter is this dude's daughter being on OnlyFans. So she's a completely illogical, dishonest person. The fact of the matter is none of us would be proud to have a daughter on OnlyFans. All of us will be proud when our daughter eventually gets effed by a guy who cares about her, has married her, and wants to procreate with her and continue on our family and expand our family. So we all expect that our daughters will get effed at some point. We don't expect that our daughters will be showing their butthole for $4.99 on the internet. That's the part that does not at all make sense. So, like... Were they just all dirt bags? It wasn't all dirt bags, but I knew... I my When I lost my virginity, I was saving my virginity for the man I wanted to marry. What happened? When I did that, I thought I was going to be with this person, this person, and it didn't work out. Uh -huh. And then so, you just kept going after that. Huh. And then I got in uh, two other relationships. Yeah. Uh -huh. So say right now, if you were to meet a man and you know, you're compatible. Mm -hmm. and So right now, what I'm trying to figure out is, has she thought out what can happen in her life at this stage? Has she thought through it? Is she so deeply embedded in the streets that she's not considering what the future could and should hold for a good woman so notice the the questioning i'm asking in the timeline now remember she's 28 going on 29 currently she's actually at that age where a woman's body is or shall we say like the quality of the eggs and all these things biologically it's you know down syndrome and you know uh, all these other unfortunate defects will occur in the child in higher rates at her age at her current age huh so let's listen to how she answers these questions do you guys fall in love mm -hmm. within a year he says hey i want to get married would you get married mm -hmm. i mean i think maybe you know an engagement or something you know could okay so let's do the math so she's 28 going on 29 so she says okay i meet a guy at 28 i'm willing to get engaged so she'll be engaged by 29 all right cool okay so sure. then you get engaged in a year after that he says he wants to get married will you get married sure okay, okay so now it's your age 30 now you're married so now you're getting way outside of your your prime you're deeply increasing the likelihood of you know autism down syndrome things like this then you're married he wants to have kids straight away will you have kids i would like to experience life um like newlyweds before okay having okay kids. so now you're 32 years old so now you're 32 okay no kids, 32. Carrying on. So then a year in after being a newlywed, he wants to have kids. Would you have kids? Possibly. Okay. Not yes. Not yes. Possibly. Fascinating. So you're ready to get out these streets then? 
I don't think I'm in these streets. Y wow, that was crazy. Now, here's the funny thing. I tried to give her credit, right? I said, you're ready to get out of these streets then, which she, according to her answers, that's not the case. But why do I have to engage her in this way? I have to engage her such that she doesn't feel she's about to be attacked. I have to engage her such that she feels at some level she has a friend, she has a confidant. She's not being in an adversarial dialogue wherein she has to be guarded and conceal information and hold back. So I'm being open to her, giving her some level of kindness. In fact, if you're like, well, Marquette, what's the simplest way you can describe what you're doing? I'm doing to her what she does to guys. I'm doing to her what she does to guys, which is to say, giving her what she, making it seem like I'm giving her what she wants, making it seem like I like her. That's what I'm doing. Stop. Jesus Christ. So you're ready to get out here in after being a newlywed. He wants to have kids. Would you have kids? Possibly. Okay. So you're ready to get out these streets then? I don't think I'm in these streets. You, you, oh, Jesus Christ. I'm the, not. I'm not in these streets. I'm you're not. not. <laughs> you're not in these streets? No, I'm really not. I will say like wow. the last time I was really like, and I can't even say in these streets because uh -huh. like what is in these streets? You? I think like like it's sleeping around. Well, you didn't like, even know what a hoe guys, is. Fucking guys like, like from here to here. I think just a hoe is subjective. Like, you know, what you right. think is a hoe. Now, this is wild. Now, let me give you guys a little bit of background on things you didn't know. So the night before the podcast, she comes by, right? So we were at uh, Resorts World. We're at a suite and, you know, we're cooling, having some conversation. And, you know, I was asking, I was like, you know, why was you hating on a piece so hard? What, what's that all about? And she's like, oh, I wasn't hating and, you know, lies. She was like, but, you know, like, you have to be real. Like, we're all sex workers and Adam's a porn star. So, like, obviously that's going to be better for our business. Duh. Like, so, of course, like, before we showed up, we didn't know you, but we all knew Adam because he's in our industry. And, like, he can, like, like forward us a lot. Like, he, we can, like, do a lot of things. And in my head, I'm like, okay, so he's a porn star and you're a sex worker, but you claim that you don't do porn. You guys are going to hear her a little bit later. She's going to claim she doesn't do porn. And secondly, I said, oh, this is what I said the, the night before the podcast. I said, oh, you want to get on Plug Talk then, huh? She's like, no, I don't want to do Plug Talk. I don't want to be in porn. And then in my head, I'm like, okay, well, then what do you want to do? I was like, do you think he's going to let you be on No Jumper? Do you think you're a main character? Because you're, you're, you're for sure a backup dancer. You're an extra. You're not a main character. You realize that, right? She was like, yeah, I realize. I was like, okay, so uh, being butt buddies with Adam's not going to help you because he would never have you on No Jumper because you're not a, a famous person rapper gang member porn star like you're essentially just a pretty bimbo this is what i'm telling her uh, the night before and so she's just basically insisting that there's some value there and this is why i want to caution all of you guys because you think getting money is going to solve your problems when really it's going to give you a new set of problems everyone has problems and you know sometimes we might have luxury problems you dig but everyone has problems and when you have money uh, one of the major problems is people just want to get next to you because they they think that for some reason, like because they're next to you and you're wealthy, like somehow they're going to become wealthy just by association, which is not the case. And especially broads, you know, they want to pick up some of those like those fringe benefits being around you. And that's precisely what she was articulating about being around Adam. Well, I think that's why I asked different. you what you think it is, because I know what I, Do know. I think sleeping around is, is kind of hoey. Like, do I? Why do, can't it just be what it is? Why does it have to be like kind of? Why does it have to be gray? Because I do think there. I don't believe in sleeping around. I don't think women should sleep uh -huh. around. I don't think it's beneficial to them. I think most women who want to have casual end up feeling like shit, dude. You know, uh -huh. casually sleep. You think it's so damn hard? No, like no. I just sleep around. Uh -huh. You're gonna end up feeling like shit, dude. You know, uh -huh. casually sleeping with this. Guy. Do you have any homegirls who sleep around? <laughs> Look at her. No. Why are you thinking so damn hard? No, like, no, I just no, asked you, no. what's the square root of 953? Okay. Because there were some girls that I was hanging out with mm -hmm. that did engage in more of that. And, I'd, and I felt like we didn't really align. So you're saying you stopped being friends with them? Like, we're so cool. Like, uh, you know, like, oh. Notice there are no straight answers here. And I want you guys to pay close attention because you're going to encounter women like this. I asked her, I said, do you have any friends who are whores? And then she starts thinking. She's not thinking of what's the truth. She's thinking of how can I answer the question without telling the truth? Huh? How can I answer the question but not tell the truth, which is yes. How can you be an OnlyFans girl and not have friends who are whores? You yourself are a whore. So everyone who's around you is a whore because birds of a feather flock together. And what I did, now this is really deep Dr. Phil stuff. 
I allowed her to separate herself. So rather than say, are you a whore? I said, are your friends a whore? And whatever she could ascribe to her friends would tell me about her because birds of a feather flock together. And she was sharp enough to think, manipulative enough to instinctively say, oh, nah, well, some are, but I stopped hanging around them, but we're still friends. We're just not that close. It's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, like, you know, we'll meet up, like, you know, let's get So none of your something. current friends you would consider? My, my are, close-knit friends? No. I wouldn't oh, you got layers. Them. The outer layer is the hoes, but the inner layer, they're, <laughs> they're Mormons. <laughs> they're not Mormons. My best friend's married. Uh-huh. Okay. My best friend's married. Um, One of my other really good girlfriends, I think we think pretty similarly when it comes to, like, casual sex. Uh, you look more Mexican today. Do I? Yeah, yeah, yeah you look more Mexican. It could be just because you told me that you were Mexican, so now I'm like, oh, it's the mariachi <laughs> pit. Like... Uh, no comment. But anyways, being that what? you are Mexican, <laughs> it's the mariachi <laughs> pimping has just shown up. Yidig. Uh, uh, Mexican women love me. You heard me. Uh, anyways, uh, finish off those super chats. We're going to carry on. We have half the I don't rage good ladies. Um, I don't think I want to listen to this guy talk down on me morally, so I'm ready to go. Who's with me? Who's with me? And then he gets up and leaves by himself. Um, yeah. Anyways, when he made that statement, and it was all of you young women on that side, he's saying, Do you believe that any one of you or some of you make more money than I do? It's a possibility, yes. It's a possibility. I suppose it also is a possibility that this roof would cave in. So that's a that, that is, is a, a possibility. I suppose a, a truism. Yeah. We have Alpha Music said, peace to the saints. I want Anissa to explain two things. One, why did you side with Sodom 22? Ooh. When he left, you didn't join him. Ooh. Two, if I put your brain in a man's body, you'd be in poverty. <laughs> Do you agree with this? Facts. You're silly. Yo, yo. I, I, we really got to dig into that first part, though. Why did you side with Sodom 22? And this is really deep, though. It's not that I sided with Adam 22, oh, because I do think there are things that he does that I wouldn't do. I wouldn't do porn. I'm not doing porn. You would never do porn. Stop. No, it. I would not. You do already porn. do porn, dummy. Ever. No. Ever, ever. Ever, ever. <laughs> there are other things that you can do on OnlyFans that isn't porn, and a lot of girls <laughs> do right. do that. Do you currently I, do porn on OnlyFans, no. like solo porn? No, I don't. Is it porn if it's solo? Yeah. It's pornographic. Yeah. Actually, we shouldn't even be using this word. Brody did set us up. You're it's about too to, late now. You're about to get a yeah, yeah. golden shadow band or oh, I already am. It's all good, though. Yeah. Um, so you're saying, watch how she starts. Uh, do you consider what you do currently porn? No. Uh, hit me with that close-up camera again. How is it porn? Okay. Uh, coming, you know what I like about you? What? That you don't live on the planet Earth. So it's like you get to travel <laughs> without having a passport. It's amazing. Um, check this, this out, though. This guy's just going to be flirting with me all no, night. It, it, I already know. Now, here's the crazy thing, too. It's like I, I just said, do you know what I like about you? Which is a, it's a nice little setup. Like, do you know what I like about you? And then I tell him something that I don't like. Right? Like, you know what I like about you? You don't live on the planet Earth. I, I just called you crazy in the most polite way. And then you in your narcissistic mind turned around and said, this guy's going to be flirting with me all night. No, that that's not flirting. I, I think you're crazy and delusional. And I just told you that very thing. And you've somehow twisted and, and misinterpreted that into affection. And it's not affection. It's like, I'm telling you, I think you're out of touch with the reality. That's the amazing thing about these chicks. We're going to get deep into this ism. I'll go ahead and take a pause for the cause, give some people some time to support the work. Love to see somebody new who's never supported the work. If you are new supporting the work, uh, send in your tuition. Let us know first time because I actually can't see on this platform. I know some of you on YouTube will be able to see that. But I'll go ahead and take a pause for the cause. No, it in the United States of Marquetica, like... How how is porn. what I'm how is what I'm doing porn? I mean, I, underst porn. I understand that OnlyFans has a negative stigma, but I mean, there are other things you can do besides porn. You know, I think. Like, let me ask you a question. You interact with fans, like say I have an OnlyFans, videos, right? Pictures. I open up my OnlyFans, the ball head lover, right? I'm there with my meat out. You hear me? Mariachi, just slanging lumber. Whatever. Yeah, just yeah. slanging lumber. I ain't even doing nothing. I'm just naked, just yeah. swinging it. Yeah. Swinging. Mm -hmm. Okay, got videos, and I'm sending them out to all these chicks who didn't pay me. Ten ninety nine a month, right? Uh, is that pornography that I sent to them? Mm. Got him. I wouldn't say it's pornography. No, you wouldn't say it. Now I'll I tell mean, you what the FBI like, would it's, say. It's explicit, like videos, explicit images. 
But it's not porn. I want to say it's porn. I mean, is it you, art? Is that is that what you're consider, calling it? I'm probably calling it art either. Okay. I mean, oh, it's not like, art, but it's not porn. Be real. You what know? Is, I'm trying to get you to be real. Shit. It, I just said they're explicit images. That's what I would categorize. It explicit under. images yeah. not categorized as porn, though. Yeah. Maybe don't say the word fifty times. That's a, that's probably a good thing too. Hey. Yeah, and I mean, you know, when you look in a Playboy magazine, I mean, is that do you consider that porn? In fact, it was banned. Yeah, when it first came uh, uh, in America, they were banning it. They were marching against it. There I mean, were well, I'm, legislation I'm sure against it's like so it. Taboo, you know, a bunch of naked ladies. And it was called like... pornography. Yeah, but yeah. do you consider it pornography? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. I mean, I think that that's your prerogative that you. No, consider no, por- no. See, this is what happens between men and women. And today, we know like the society is getting sick because people <laughs> just make up definitions. That's the problem. Like, for example, if we say, like, what's a woman? People will be like, it's whatever you choose to be. Let's Google the definition of pornography. And let's see. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. I'm just, let's just look it up. Because you're you're telling me it is if, pornography. If you, I have a question. If you Google the word partner, would the definition be different today than it was 15 years ago? The answer is yes, it would be different. It could be. Yeah, of Printed course. Printed or visual material containing the explicit description. I'm going to go ahead and take a pause for the calls right now. If you guys want me to uh, continue on, go ahead and send it in. Otherwise, I'm looking at my calendar right now. I can do a member-only live session. I'll review uh, the rest of the video and go through the game because there's a lot of game to chop up. And I don't, I don't want to miss this. I want you guys to be able to get this information. So undoubtedly, if you're a member, T-H-E-S-A-S-N.com. You will get this. Have no worries. Um, I, I'll give you guys a couple minutes, in, maybe about four or five minutes. If you guys send it in, we'll carry on. If not, um, it'll probably be on Wednesday the 20th, and I'll probably do it uh, somewhere around noon, um, something like that, maybe 11, maybe noon. It'll be impromptu, but it'll be a live session member only on the 20th. I'll go through, kick the game. If you're not able to join, that's fine. It'll still be available exclusive for the members at patreon.com slash the saint in the center, as well as T-H-E-S-A-S-N.com. So I have no fear. And right now I'm earmarking the 20th as a, a good time to do that live session. So I'll just give you guys a little bit more time in five minutes. If we don't see it there, then we're going to go ahead and cut this one. Um, I'll get back to my beautiful life. You guys get back to what you guys are doing. Hopefully uh, something that's uh, very enjoyable and productive. Or display Did you say sexual- explicit? Okay. Uh, images? Description or display of sexual organs or activity. Intended sexual to organs? Like them titties? <laughs> rather than aesthetic or emotional feelings. Like that ass. She warned that access okay. to hardcore pornography was yeah. shaping. By that definition, is I it porn? I guess by the definition, yes. It's porn. porn. <laughs> okay. are, you, guess, wait, guess, are you admitting that you're wrong? Yeah, that's fine. That's amazing. That you're, no. you're making progress. I admit Can, you Phil? Can you call me Dr. Phil? Can you call me Dr. Phil? Just call me Dr. Phil. I was we're making progress okay. here like send how, her a bill okay so how you're saying uh-huh. you know now that was funny how she finally admitted that she does porn now it's quite strange how she had to look up the definition of porn on google to figure out that that's what she's doing i want you guys to understand what that really was here's some of this deep level ism why is it She didn't trust herself to know the definition of porn, which is ironic because she does porn. That's number one. Then number two, she didn't trust me as a man, as a knowledgeable, mature man to tell her what it is. Can't trust my word. Can't trust my leadership. So she trusts Google, which is not a person. There's no human intelligence there. It is just the accumulation or the amalgamation or bringing together different sources online from strangers who may or may not be reputable or it's going to dictionary.com. So why couldn't she trust me? No, she had to go to Google. Oh, Google said, oh, now it's fine. Now it's true. Don't you ever be in a relationship with a woman who doesn't trust your authority, who doesn't respect your opinion and respect your mind and respect your knowledge. She will never yield to you. She always feels like, oh, I need to Google this if that's the tiebreaker. So Google some technology created by people we don't know is the tiebreaker between you and I. Don't you ever deal with a woman like that. That's a low woman. She'll never respect your authority. She will be a perpetual headache to you. I promise you of that. Acknowledged via PayPal. Shout out to Anthony writes, Peace of Saints, please carry on. May I acknowledge via Cash App, Joshua sent in six bucks. Uh, Joshua sent in. Uh, Melvin writes, I plan on setting up a meeting, setting up, uh, setting up a meeting for the Saints. Very good. He writes, where we will discuss fitness and diet. Excellent. Very good to hear. And learn muscle building this weekend. What do you think? Sounds like a good idea. I, I encourage you to do such. Dedrick writes, 
Have you, uh, excuse me, have a great night. See you on the member only live. <laughs> I hear you, bro. Yeah, we go do it like that. We go do it like that because, uh, you know, people tend to not appreciate that, which is free. And not even 1% of people uh, watching support the stream. So I'll do a little bit more for the people who sent in and then we'll we'll do the member only live. Uh, I agree with you, Detrick. And it'll be nice. I'll, I'll enjoy it. Partner, where we're seeing the definition of partner. Yeah, it's, it's changed. because It's the, changed yeah. over the course of years. I was referring like to porn as being like a man and a woman, a woman and a man, or someone inserting something in their vagina. Like, right. That's porn. See, that's the crazy thing is what she just explained. That is not porn. That is actually the true definition of that. That's called hardcore porn. But because the society has become increasingly mentally ill, that is now known as vanilla porn. When in actual fact, say 15 years ago, that was categorized as hardcore. Penetrative sex was known as hardcore pornography. Porn as a standard was known as nude imagery that you might see in Playboy, Penthouse, magazines such as that. That's That was like the first iteration of it. And, you know, women touching themselves, that was called pornography. Women being in like certain positions, that was pornographic material. Intercourse, that was considered hardcore pornography. Uh, so there you go. The society is becoming sick and we slowly adjust to these things such that we don't even know the meaning of words anymore. And we have to change the meaning of words because we're so desensitized. That doesn't even look hardcore to us anymore. It's not hardcore unless you're spitting in her mouth and choking her and slapping her and jizzing all over everything like you know, and, uh, and grunting like and doing weird stuff. Then it's hardcore. Shout to Bear Field supporting the work rights. Peace of the Saints may I also acknowledge Yim Yim writes tuition first time. Shout out to Yim Yim. We all acknowledge Yim Yim. And I always remind people that when you can do something new, it builds a muscle. Being able to do new things, use new strategies, this is what enables success in life. So it's a good muscle to build. Shout out to Nella HD writes, let's get it. Right. But I guess, you know, by Google's definition, sure. And cool. Google don't know shit, right? Huh. Google, I would say Google knows <laughs> quite a bit. You. Yeah. I'll mess it with you. Okay, cool. Um, so why did you side with Sodom 22? So that's the first piece of that. Why, why did, did you side with Sodom, Sodom 22? 22? Cause he, he gay. <laughs> no. He not gay. You think he's gay? You don't? Clearly. He could be a cuck, but I don't know if he's gay. That's not gay? Thing? <laughs> I don't know. Like for example. I mean, people are into like some weird stuff. Say I wanted to max you out right now. He gonna have to leave. She could hold the camera, but you got to leave. But like some people are just way. into like weird stuff. Yeah, weird like, like, stuff. Now, let me point out something to you guys. This girl is a sex crazed pervert. And the reason she went into OnlyFans is because she's a sex crazed pervert. And she says, well, this is something I deeply enjoy. I don't want to feel ashamed about it, about how I really feel. And so she says, hey, I'm masturbating three times a day anyways. I might as well show people and get paid for it. Yeah, she's a sex crazed pervert who's been exposed to vile things in her youth. And she only had to explore and see more things over time. So at this level, she is a sexpert. She's a sexpert. And this sick person is over here to Defending people who have certain kinks. Well, why? Because she has kinks. Because she does weird stuff. There's no way I'm going to defend a cuck because I think it's disgusting and I don't do that. I'm not going to defend certain things because I would never do it. It doesn't relate to me. Human beings are very self-interested. So anytime you hear someone like, I'm an LGBTQ ally. No, you're not an ally. You're just in the closet, little buddy. So this broad's a pervert. There's no reason to de uh, defend sexual perversion unless you're a sexual pervert. Like it's kind of like a like it's gay. kind of like a hot thing to some Stop people. It. Like oh, you but know, a dude like though, a man being there, I don't know. Like, like if I was gonna max you on, they're gonna be like a live studio audience. It would have to be all women. Ideally, like a whole yoga class or a volleyball team. Why? Okay, so what about you've never had a threesome? This is not about me. This you've is about never you. Had a threesome this is about with you another, with another man. Oh hell nah, hell nah. Uh uh. Um, no. Uh uh. Stop, 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 stop. No. Not even when you but, were not so you even had when a, you were like a kid. You, you had a threesome in, with two guys. No. no. We call that a what train. What you guys should think about. She's saying, you never had a threesome with two guys? And then she says, not even when you were a kid? Wouldn't that be the time you'd be least likely to have it? She said, not even when you were a kid. Threesomes, that's advanced. Just so in case anybody was confused, that's advanced. <laughs> you heard me? So why would you more likely have had a threesome as a child as opposed to an adult? Huh? Let me rewind this for you. Other man. Oh hell nah, hell nah. Uh uh. Um, no. Uh uh. Stop, stop, stop. No. Not even when you but, were. Not so even you even had when a, you were like a kid. You, you had a threesome. Like a sick girl. Not even when you were a kid. That's sad, ladies and saints. That's sad. This is the kind of thing makes you ask her. 
well, what have you done? What have you been involved in? Why did you say as a kid in particular? Ladies and saints, I would like to confidently go out and say, not only was she sexually active in her youth, which means not a virgin at 25, I would like to point out that she had experienced unfortunate things in her youth by more than one guy. Hmm? And I'm highly confident at the same time. They may have even collaborated. Yeah. Yeah, she's experienced some bad things. No doubt. And with two guys. No. We call that a train if we're being honest. Yeah, I would probably call that a train as well, but no, I've never had a train ran on me. You no. never had the Amtrak? No, never you had the Amtrak, Never no. bought a ticket? Never it's bought a ticket. It's called the devil's threesome. No. Because that shit is evil. It's not right. <laughs> Honestly, it's not right. It's strange. I've never, no, I've never done that, no. Yeah. Okay, but to answer your question. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe you. I don't believe. I shot to Marcellus. He writes, thoughts on the value of paying for a private athletic club. Is it worth being around successful individuals? It is always better to be around successful individuals as opposed to those who are not in general. But you should ask yourself, what are the points of inevitable contact? And also, are these persons whom with inevitable contact, and I'll explain what I mean in a second, uh, we'd be able to find a way to collaborate or engage with one another meaningfully. When I say inevitable contact, like for example, if you were to take a salsa dancing class, you inevitably have to touch the woman. You have to talk to her. It's a requirement as a part of the class when you're switching partners. So if you were to go to an expensive health club and there's no inevitable contact, meaning there's no necessity for you to talk to other persons there, you'd just be sharing space and not really getting full value out of that extra money you're spending. So I think that it would be better to invest your money into something that provides inevitable contact, like a salsa dancing cl uh, class in a wealthy neighborhood or something like this. So that's where you really should have your mind. And I, and I appreciate that question. It's a smart question. These are the kind of things that I was pondering at your age. By the way, shout out to the ballers. Direct rights, new to the show. You completely sold me with this dismantling of that <laughs> euphemistic circumlocution using simp. Peace to the saints. I appreciate that. And shout out to the, the folks who are new here. We, we welcome you to this thing of ours, and I think you'll enjoy and benefit greatly. Uh -huh. um, it's not that I was siding with him. Like, I mean, I would side. You'd there, be backtracking like a some, mug. What, what do you mean? We're going to play the answering? footage. Can we cue up that footage? Go to the, the share screen real quick. When we were talking about mutual. siding. Okay. So for like, sure, I like that. Uh, I'm not, definitely. Like, I'm not, oh, no, you was picking a side. You got a whole table of people. Everyone's phone is off. He's giving the instructions while he's instructing, also known as giving directions. Mm -hmm. That's when you need to be at attention. See, the problem is you're a renegade. Uh -huh. And when you're a renegade uh -huh. and you ain't got instructions, uh -huh. you're heading for destruction. And that's the problem. Yeah. So you had your phone out when you should have been receiving instructions. See, the problem is I know you were really bad at this one childhood game. You know what it was called? What? Simon says, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you ain't know who Simon was. That was a problem. Yeah, she thought she was Simon. She thought she was the one giving the directions. She ain't know how to follow. Shout out to Malik. Uh, he went to mdblabel.com. He copped the black corduroy hat with the, with the flag. Now, that one is cold. I actually don't have that one. I want to see how this one looks. And by the way, if you guys have any of my merch, definitely tag me on IG when you're wearing the merch. Uh, cause part of it is if I don't have it, I want to see how it looks like how you saucing it up. You dig? Uh, so feel free to tag me. I always repost your stories. You'll notice a lot of guys when they're getting in their fitness, uh, when they're wearing the merch, when they're, uh, playing the music on Spotify, I always support you guys re repost your stuff all the time. And remember, you know, when people have a significant number of follows, they usually charge like thousands of dollars to post stories and things like this. I do it at no cost. It's all love. So definitely uh, tap in with your boy carrying on. the fuck this is exactly <laughs> exactly i just think it's ridiculous like you know what hey i think sometimes i think i'm a very respectful person i usually follow the rules but you know uh -huh. what hey he did say hey if we could get your attention for that time and in right. that moment you know what i took my phone out i'm sure there are all things that there are things that all of us do did you do it and long we, enough for him to call you don't, out don't we all break rules so tell me it was if it was did you do it long I enough for him to cut you a heathen. Call I'm, you I'm out. such a terrible person. Did he call you I'm out about it? I'm such a terrible person for pulling my phone out and turning off my alarm. Why the fuck did you park in handicap yesterday? Why the <laughs> fuck did you park in handicap yesterday? 
<laughs> this Yo, man I to, like this, this red herring. And listen to, to me. me. G- give me the close up camera. Being so disrespectful. I damn sure for did park it handicapped. Rules, and I tell you, you one more thing. Illegally I'm going to continue breaking that law. Now go back to that major, that main camera. Check this out. But you want to illegally park in handicap. That's correct. People, but let's stay on topic. I, we're, we're going to address that. I'm down to go okay. into that. I am absolutely down to go into that. So let's first address what we're talking about because you pulled a distraction, which is a major tactic that women use and people losing arguments lose use. They distract you from the point of hand. No, this is what I was I, saying, love. I circled back to no, the we, question. We, you that ain't we got to circle answering. back if you never leave. Here's the we thing. Left. We started talking about something. If else. you were so quick, like boom, let me pull it out, boom, turn off the alarm, ah, put it away. Why did Brody have time to call you out if it was that quick? There are probably some other things, yeah, that I was doing. Oh, whatever. there are probably some other things. Oh, now it comes out. I oh, thought you just turned that alarm off. Were you watching and some me the entire other time? time? No, I was paying attention to the speaker, Nick, and I was distracted because you way. were doing the wrong thing long enough that he called you out, and you just admit that you were doing <laughs> other things, and you initially <laughs> said it was the alarm. Were you wrong? I was wrong for pulling my phone out when he... Ask for our attention. Yes. Thank you. We're listen. Yes. We're making. We're not gonna need you, that many more but sessions. But you are not right. We're gonna. To we're not gonna need that many more come sessions. Come at me. I don't. I'm, oh, you're saying about that. <laughs> yeah. You're saying you about. Not- I want you guys to notice two very important things here. Number one. Number one. She says I was wrong. Speaking of herself, she says I was wrong, but you weren't right to come at me. So what she's saying is that I was wrong as a woman, but you as a man shouldn't address it. I was wrong as a woman, but you as a man shouldn't address it. Now, are they going to self-correct? Rarely. Rarely. Can a real man take feedback, criticism? Absolutely. Can a real woman take feedback, criticism? Absolutely. Can a renegade take feedback, criticism? No. That's why she's single. That's why she's alone. She's unruly. She's disagreeable. These disagreeable women are the worst. You'll never be happy. You can never say, get them to apologize. Huh? Hell, they won't even accept your apology. That's the crazier part. And you're going to see that play out here. But I want you guys to listen to what she said because you'll notice how much of a liar she is. Listen, I told her, wow, you're making progress. You're not going to need that many more sessions. Letting her know, it's like I'm your therapist here. You're a nut job and I'm here, you know, helping you work through your issues, which is the reality of the thing. But listen, and remember that she says this. She says, I would never do therapy. Listen, and it's almost like she's bipolar. She clearly has mental health issues because listen to her say this. Then you're going to hear a little bit later in the podcast, she's going to claim, I never said I wouldn't go to therapy. I'm in therapy right now. And I remember looking over at my assistant like, Shorty said, and then my assistant was nodding like, yes, she did say that earlier. And I was like, okay, okay, I see what's going on here. So check it out. I'm going to rewind this for you. We're listening. Yeah, pulling my phone out when he asked for our attention. Yes. Thank you. We're listening. Yes. We're making. We're not gonna need you, that many more but sessions. But you are not right. We're gonna. To we're not gonna need that many more sessions. I don't. I'm, oh, you're saying about that? <laughs> yeah. You're saying you about are that. not right to come. Okay. At you guys just heard her say, "quote I would never take effing therapy." I'm gonna wait in the chat till somebody writes. Yes, I heard her state, "I will never take effing therapy." I just want to make sure that you guys caught that piece real quick. And shout out to uh, Antoine supporting the work. Appreciate you very much. And shout out to the real ones. You dig? Shout out to those men who pay what they owe. Shout out to Gwensley. He writes tuition. Just got home from a work event. Was one of the few that was recognized for efforts toward a recent project. Very good. That means you're doing well. It's nothing crazy, but it's great motivational fuel to keep. You You wrote grinding. No, nah, don't grind. That's hard work. Just glide. My boy, just glide. He says to keep gliding when it's holiday season for many, but hustle mania for the few. You know, it's always hustle mania, low key. Uh, next time for the real work, or should be now time for the real work. Peace of the saints, indeed. Appreciate you and congratulations. May we all congratulate him on his accomplishment. And honestly, when you see someone winning and successful, it should make you feel good, especially if they're associated with you and he is associated with us. So let us take pride in his accomplishments as if they are our own. Austin writes, remember Annalicia reminds me of her times 10. <laughs> you know what? And I think Annalicia was not, actually, Annalicia just is crazy. They, they're probably about the same, low key. Low key, they're probably about the same. It, it's sick and sad out here. Yeah. Okay, let's see. He said, she definitely a renegade. Okay, cool. So he said, yes, I heard it. Okay, great. Now, carrying on. 
at me uh -huh. that I'm this terrible person for doing that when you literally fucking were parking in Hanover <laughs> yesterday. Uh, like that's ridiculous. I was parked in the handicap. Yeah, so she said it like three times. That. I feel fine about that. Okay, like you, I didn't come at you acting crazy. You were coming at me for this. No, nah, I feel fine reason. about it. Here's the difference: when you were doing the wrong thing, you acted like you were not doing the wrong thing. How did? How was I acting like I was not doing the wrong? Thing? I was just turning off my alarm. That's all I was doing. Why are you harassing me? I'm just turning off my alarm. That was your story then, but today your story is. And I did some other things. So it's like, love, which is it? You're going to crack under question. I, I can't do no dirt with her. Regardless now, of what the fuck I was doing, I was on my fucking phone. You were wrong, right? It doesn't matter. It, it would have been a really short not, story if you would have just matter. said, I'm wrong. It does not matter what I was doing. Either way, you being the man mm -hmm. that you claim to be and you You don't love even know women, what man I claim to and, be. You know, hey, women are, you know, the biggest part of this. A woman's love is, you know, biggest part of this pyramid. And you love women. She's trying to get some ism today. By the way, you'll notice that she's consistently very vulgar. Lower class people, lower class women are often vulgar. And this makes sense in as much as they're not very intelligent. You see, when your vocabulary is limited, you tend to use four letter words, curse words. And this is what we're seeing consistently from her. It's really distasteful as a female. I highly recommend that women don't take on, you know, the things that are common among men, especially those lower things that are base in a bad way, like cursing. Uh, and also, you know, she's really grasping at anything she can to try to uh, discredit and deride. And, you know, the, the humorous thing to me is, you know, she's even referencing, you know, the canvas on the wall where it reads sources of power. You can see this canvas if you're wondering what I'm talking about. It's at sasnbrand.com. But she's even you know, grasping at that, trying to explain away her misdeeds, not realizing that when we use the term woman, she's not included. <laughs> Hey, Back boy. To women. I She's don't trying think, to get some ism. I don't think I like it's, that. you know, like a very, it doesn't feel like a very, like, you know, a high value man. And I know you probably don't like that I've term. I've never used the term. You never used that term, yeah. uh, for lack of a better term, you know, a man of value. Okay. To talk down to a woman like that for a mistake. It, what I did, no, what it I was, did, you, it was actually did, the what best did, thing. What I did was wasn't hurtful to, me. to correct you. What I did wasn't hurtful to anyone, but you uh, parking in handicap, you took that spot away from someone <laughs> who actually fucking needed it. What about that? I love that. I'm gonna address that, but real quick, you said that a high value I man, said, okay, you said a high I value up, man I say, okay. shouldn't, right? I shouldn't have been on Thank my you. phone, but, but here's can the you problem. Admit, but can you admit that I was not?